done. He's not he, ready. He's, uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, wrong day. When I move, I'm fast. <laughs> um. I'll put the pen then. He's ready. Okay. okay. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I will say that was in 604. Um, huh? Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, changes or additions to the agenda? We have the approval of minutes. I didn't see. When did you send those? Oh, are they just attached? No, Lauren was the person. Yeah, we're in transition, remember, yeah. Diane? That's what I figured. Transitioning yeah. to Lauren and well, Lauren and I was hasn't quite got the rhythm yet. So. I was thinking <laughs> on the way down here, I was like, I don't I know what it. we're going to do about minutes because <laughs> I, mean, I hadn't read any. I didn't make a copy of the July one minutes, but I can certainly go make a copy for everybody. Did we ever get those or no? July no, one. I like I, yeah, I, I got those. I think I got those. I've those got them in this. Window. Yeah, I've got them. A in while ago. Do you, want to, do you want to make copies and we'll look at them again quickly or no? Uh, we could just put it on. We can we put, can it put it up until the next meeting. meeting. It's I just think a, they have to they, be approved within a certain amount of time. Yeah, though. I think so. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think. Don't mind going to yeah, work. let's um, let's just push that down. Yeah, and even if we just took a few to minutes sure. to read them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll I think I think it needs to happen. If anything yeah. happens, just write it down. I will. Yeah, I don't see the name. So then. I don't have any public. No, no public. <laughs> it's a bit chaotic public. in here, so I was wondering if there was somebody hiding. Um, <laughs> it's getting ready, though. There's nobody uh, hiding. Nobody hiding. <laughs> no. Um, okay. Um, okay. So items for discussion. We have the portrait of a graduate, which I think is important and a big discussion. We desperately need to get to the forum data. The SRO update should be quick. really brief. And be quick, yeah. Um, I would like to delay the radar list until our September meeting. Because I feel like it's going to be too much, and we don't have Colleen. Um, and I also looked at everybody's radar lists. Um, Did everybody submit? No. Everybody was that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I did look at them, and they are all over the place, and there was no way to bring them together. And so I feel like we need a discussion. We need a to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, little Venn diagram. I see what yeah, over that. something. We yeah. need to figure that out. Um, could we put? Could we do them like first in the September meeting, or, or yes. put them high just because I because they I keep think it's really falling important. off the and radar? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and uh, I agree. And I don't. We'll see what else we have for um, the September meeting. But I think we get into budgeting. I think the big thing is budgeting. September. Yeah. Well, it would be good to have that radar list done before exactly. we start or budgeting. Budget, right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Which the forum. And I also feel like. The forum may drive, the forum discussion may drive some of the radar list as well. Yes. yes. And so that's why that was another thought yep. in pushing it off again. Mm. Um, okay, so I'm going to move that to September. Very important. Really glad that everybody did their homework. Um, almost everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's August. The life has been a little bit much. <laughs> it's August. I get it. Um, Understood. And I also think Colleen emailed me and she's like, can we delay the meeting? Um, I mm. think she wants to be a part of that. I also think she wants to be a part of the forum discussion. Um, so we'll have to make sure that she gets looped in. Um, okay. So. Uh, and, and along yeah. the, with the changes and additions, yeah. at the end, the tentative executive session I was I would was hoping that that would be an executive session okay just because I think we could follow up on some uh, questions that we had, had been posed at earlier meetings okay or relating to something um, specific yeah so um, we can document it yes um, I think we had some questions regarding, uh, thank you, employee, new employees. Okay. And uh, yeah, I was just, I like, always like a, like a new yeah. look. Mm -hmm. new okay. Look. Thank you. Okay. So staffing. Yeah. Staffing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Didn't this 
Okay. Great. So let's all take. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe well, check your hand off when you're done reading. Yeah. Okay. Or flip your paper over. I don't know. So July 1st was the retreat, actually, right? Yeah. yeah. She's going to have to be if I don't have any more computer at home, but I'll let her know. Okay. And you'll send her the minutes so she can get them off the next time. She's so long ago. <laughs>
I'm good. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to, well, no, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve both sets of minutes. And both being July, July 1. 1 and July, July, July 18. Yes. Okay. So is there a motion out there? I would make that motion. Okay. Diane, you got that motion? Yeah. It was well worded as it was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll second that. Okay. Is there any discussion? No. Okay. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes of July 1 and July 18, 2019, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Moving on. Um, items for discussion. Portrait of a graduate. It's a big one. Yeah, this is a big one. We need to spend a little time on this. Um, <clears throat> And uh, Nikki, Christine, and were you there, Brittany, for the when we were at Lake Morian? We no, not for that okay, day. So, not for yeah, that. you came for that for the other day. Yeah, so we we kicked this off, and uh, with an administrative, well, I guess what we're calling the leadership team meeting, uh, and the four board chairs, and well, four board chairs, actually, Mount Scott, the board chair and the vice chair essentially because we felt every town should have a representation on the leadership team. Leadership team is only going to be responsible pretty much for the logistics, the mechanics. Uh, the design team, which is what we need to talk about tonight, is really going to be the instrumental uh, group that is going to have the most influence and say on the process. So the principals now uh, you know, working with, with me and Karen a bit in the special ed office, but we're trying to identify a uh, cohort of parents, cohort of community, uh, students. Um, we're thinking even at the K-8s, an eighth grade student, could we could make that work. Uh, there'll be a few high school students. Um, and, and, um, and then the staff, obviously. And we've got we've got a rough idea of how many of each of those or Christine mm -hmm. doesn't know that we yep. need and that's probably what she's gonna want to talk about in a minute <clears throat> is how do we generate especially we can we can certainly take care of the staff the students um, and keep you posted on who they are but I think in terms of uh, parents and community the board should have you should weigh in on that some the problem is we're under a little bit of a time constraint because the first design team meeting is September uh, 19th, is it? No, I it's later than that, I think. No, I think that's about right. Hold on. No, that's open house. I'll get it. <laughs> I think it's the, tw maybe it's the 25th, September 25th, last yeah. Wednesday in, and oh, by the way, we should have two board members, too. Not more than two, because if we have more than two, then we've got to warn all these meetings, and I'm not saying I'm opposed to that, but it just makes it a little more complicated, I think. Two from the whole SU or two from no, each two school? No, two from each school. So just so we don't get a quorum. September 25th oh, from 5 to 8. Okay. Yeah. So these the meetings. The dates are set. Yeah. Yeah, the dates are set. We can give you all four yep. dates uh, yep. if, you, if, you, if you want them right now. Yeah, it's 5 to 8. Uh, dinner will be provided. And the consultant, Mike Nicholson, from Battelle for Kids and Portrait of a Graduate, will lead this design uh, effort. And he has us. He's been meeting with us, and he met. We ha he happened to be in town today because he's working with another district not too far away. So we got an extra couple, couple of hours, hours on yeah. him today, yeah. and uh, we solidified. Just made sure we all had the right dates and the right process and protocols, and we're asking the right questions. But he will lead the process, um, and it's basically around a set of questions around you know what are the attributes, skills. Uh, attitudes that are necessary for a, for a student to be successful as a graduate entering into the 21st century. And Patel has a great layout for this and some great questions that get discussed in small groups around tables. Then you generate uh, a variety of responses. Then, just like in any other brainstorm, you, you prioritize those responses. You try to find common themes. And again, fortunately, with our input, they do a lot of that work, spit it back, and then you know the second meeting is really digesting that. Then, so it's it's four meetings to get to uh, a written document that basically outlines those skills, attributes, 
and attitudes that that would make for a, 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 a successful graduate. Um, and they they put that document together, and then what that does, or the way what the way it's supposed to work is, then that is your basis, kind of in a backwards mapping way, of doing step two of the strategic planning. What do your systems, your curriculum, your instruction, your schedules, your logistics, what, is, what does that need to look like to, in, in order to have the most opportunity to, in fact, make this, make this happen? Um, and, and Battelle can be part of that part two or not. We could do that ourselves if we wanted to. They, they certainly have a, a part two component of this. This part one all ends in January, so it's about a half year process to get the portrait done. Um, now, I had an interesting conversation at Weathersfield because obviously the question that comes up when you start to notify communities and even staff, well, portrait of a graduate, quote unquote a high school graduate, we don't have a high school. We send our kids everywhere. But I thought it was interesting because one of the Weathersfield board members said, um, yeah, but we, our community ought to get invested in this kind of a process because, uh, not that I don't think the Heartland community wants to, but, but, but the question came up. Because, in fact, most of the high schools in the surrounding areas are all working on these 21st century mm -hmm. skills. They all have to be tied to a performance-based curriculum by state law. Mm -hmm. This isn't like, you know, we made this up somewhere. It is just part of the way we do it. And then finally, the other comment that was made that I thought was borderline brilliant by one of their board members, they said, well, look, when we finish this work and we get that portrait, could we turn that into some sort of brochure or handbook? What should I look for when I'm searching for a high school? For my child, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. if that's what the community says we want, then are the schools, you know, that that you're potentially sending to are they are they offering that kind of, you know, that kind of curriculum that supports that kind of 21st century graduate? So I thought that was good, and not that I think we're going to have to defend this a lot. I think people will be willing to participate, to invest. It really is, you know, our next level of continuous improvement planning, which we have to do anyhow, that's also by law. Uh, and the other thing too sometimes, and again, it's not like with Heartland, I've never really felt I have to defend the central office or the SU. Sometimes in Weathersfield, I do feel like I have to do that. But that's never been the case in Heartland. But, but again, the other thing to keep in mind is with strategic planning, even in the continuous improvement process that's mandated by law, that is supposed to happen at the SU level, and then the buildings are supposed to use those, basically those at which Christine mm -hmm. did, yep. which actually all of our principals did. So that's why that participation, and the other thing that I say jokingly sometimes, and I know the camera's running, but <laughs> in Weathersfield, <laughs> is when people talk about the central office or the SU, it's not like we're located in Providence, Rhode Island. I mean, we, we're part of the whole picture Right, and we we are a community, and we and, and that supervisory union board is made up of all of our individual board members, and so it's 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 important to keep it cohesive. But I think tonight um, the real critical yeah. piece, and Christine, you can take it from there, is we've got to identify. We can give you those other dates too. But we've got to identify a, a, a system by which we're going to pick that the members of the design team from Hartman. So a couple of quick okay. questions mm -hmm. before Dave we leave. Um, that portrait plan, uh, the system between now and January, is that scheduled or is the, is the, is the idea with Battelle that that is done by the community and like two more years from now it's done again? Yeah, they or think it's they... Or is that how they leave you? Yeah, they, they, they look to about a three to five year three timeline, to five year. essentially. Yeah, because once you get the portrait done, you know, you don't have to revisit that necessarily that often, but you should revisit your plan probably annually and then maybe rewrite a whole new one, you know, every five years maybe, which is why we're writing one now because we have, I was here a year, then we did one. So, you know, I'm in my seventh or eighth year, so we're, we're, it's, time. it's time to do yeah. it again. Yeah. And what was the name of the consultant again? Mike, Mike Nicholson. Nicholson. Mike Nicholson. Nicholson. Okay. Like Jack Nicholson, but Mike Nicholson. And, uh, yeah, and he's he. I I like him a lot. Yeah, the administrators really like him. Yeah. Nikki, you met him. 
Uh, yeah. He's a practitioner. He's been a teacher, a, a coach, a principal, an assistant principal, a, yep. uh, assistant superintendent, superintendent. So he's done all those jobs. I think he's even served on a school board. So he kind of gets it. Uh, I, th I think he'll be good in our communities. I Great. think they'll, I think they'll like him and, and and work well with him. And he's very flexible. Yeah, and he's he's making he's taking us through the actual process as a team. We're yeah. doing the work that will be done, which is really helpful. Because um, we'll be asked to facilitate yeah. probably some of those small yeah. groups too. So we the um, admin team kind of has a template letter to go out. Some some principals have sent it out already. I was waiting for tonight, um, which lists what it is and the dates and I'll give those to you now so you can think about if you want to be on this team um, so in addition to the sub September 25th which will be at Windsor High School we have October 30th which will be at Weathersfield same time 5 to 8 November 19th which will be here at Heartland from 5 to 8 and then skip December we skip December and we go to January 14th at Albert Bridge so my hope is that you um, might have some ideas on potential community, business, people that would be um, good members to have on the team. And I'm, I'm going to send it out for the entire community, but if there are people that you think um, you'd like me to call or email specifically, I'm happy to do that. We can wait and see. Or um, part of part of the process is having a very robust cross section. Team. Yeah. So we want to make sure we are represented in different areas. Do the pe the people don't have to live in Heartland, right? Well, they should own a business in Heartland, or they should live in Heartland, because you're picking the Heartland representatives essentially. Right. But I'm I'm just thinking if we're thinking about where our graduates are going to go either higher ed or mm -hmm. to businesses right. there aren't that many, many. Businesses. right i know i was and struggling there are, there are specific <laughs> kind of you know i mean yeah. i think uh -huh. we might need to go in order to get a good yeah, cross section of higher issue, education right. you know what are higher education yeah. leaders what are business leaders looking for and employees and students mm -hmm. we might i i mean I, that just strikes me well but we do have um business leaders that live in Heartland. Exactly. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like, could their, could their business be outside of Oh, yeah. Outside. Oh, sure. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Or Dartmouth College or right. Right. They could hospital. Be, yeah. Right. Professors, administrators. Yeah. Sure. I think yeah. that's the kind of folks we kind of want. Yeah. 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 But not only that type, but yeah. So you guys are going to select the staff members. Well, I sent out the, an email today inviting staff to consider being on the team. And you gave them the dates. And I gave them the dates. The goal is to get um, roughly, and I think we're, um, we can be a little bit flexible, but we said six, um, staff. six staff members, six community members, six parents, two board members, two students from Heartland, and the same in each of the other. Mike wants a group of about 60 to say yeah. he can, but he's worked with 50. You know, we may not get all of that, but the, the more robust the group, mm -hmm. like Christine said, the better off we're yeah. going to be. And he, he gave, he talked about, and Nikki knows because you were there, he talked about some categories. I mean, you want your influences, people that have a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. influence in the town, maybe your town manager, you yeah. know, uh, maybe not, you know, uh, uh, then. He also talked about, I think a select board member would be great, mm -hmm. you know, because they're kind of what he calls the, in the chieftain's role, or, you know, mm -hmm. they, they play a specific role in the community. But again, some of that will have to be done, I think, by invitation. Yeah. And they will have to be part of that, that six community, which is different than the six parents. Mm -hmm. Because remember, the parents are also going to be community members. So I think they, mm -hmm. so what you're really looking for in the community is people that don't have kids in school. You know, because you've already got that representation. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So they may be older. Can do we have time to think about it? Or yeah, do yeah. Think? What I'll do, if if you're okay with that, I'll send out the general email. Uh, I'll have Linda post it and see what I get. And while you think about specific people, and then you can just email or call me, and then I'll I'll either call those people personally or email them or invite them directly. That's what happened. The board yeah. members just sent 
uh, I'm talking about Wethersfield again, because mm -hmm. they, they, they got out a little ahead because they had an earlier board meeting yep. than you, but they sent suggestions to Gene. Yep. You know, Gene kind of categorized them, you know, uh, tier one, tier two, she, and now she's reaching out to them yep. to see if they're willing. So if you have anybody, you know, neighbors, friends, people you know in the business community that don't have kids here for the community piece, get those names to Christina, we'll reach out. Then once all those names come together, which I'm hoping is by no, later than early September, the first week in September, yep. then I will take those names with email addresses and I'll send out that first official invite, right? Um, you know, the towns of Heartland, Wethersfield, Brownsville, and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and the Windsor Southeast Supervisor Union are embarking on, and, you know, I'll, I'll lay it out there. Thank you so much for agreeing to serve. You know, as you know, here are the dates, that type of letter. And, uh, and then basically, once we've got that, then Mike pretty much takes it, takes it from there. Yeah. But we also need to think about who on the board, you know, because you got it. You, uh, the other thing Mike said is, and this will be this will be a criteria that may sort out who can. You have to make all four dates, right? You have right. to be able to do all four nights uh, and be part of it. I mean, obviously, if somebody gets sick or there's a death in the family, then that's different. But the commitment up front is that you're going to do all four. And probably the board chair should be one of them. I mean, I hate to do that, Dean, Nikki, but I know. <laughs> Sorry, Nikki. I know that's the point. <laughs> I know Sean, Sean's jumping on board and jumping yeah. in the lake at the same time. But <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> right, right in the middle of hockey season. I know. Yeah. Oh, big season. Yeah. It's, it's, the fall's a tough time. But when's a good time, right, to do there is a something good. like this? <laughs> Certainly the summer's not, right? Nope. <laughs> um, okay. So is there somebody else that really, really wants to? I was going to say no, please, because okay. of the negotiation team. <laughs> yeah, yeah negotiations will crank oh, up right. in the middle of the fall. Is yeah. Sean on that up. team, too? Sean? Oh, I, don't, no. I don't know who is on that from Weathersfield. That's a good question. I think <laughs> he might be, actually. <laughs> ah, that's I, might rem I might remind him of that so that, <laughs> yeah, so that, you know, yeah, again, right. I, because Heidi is, Heidi's gone. Heidi's yeah, Heidi gone. left the board. Right. Oh, really? She was a great negotiator, yeah. Yeah. And, and a great board member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She just went back to practicing her law as an assistant state's attorney. And she's a pretty she's, busy woman. She's busy. She's yeah. Yeah. Teaching busy too. Woman. But she was a great board member. Yeah. She, we'll miss her. Right. Um, yeah. And Scott, I don't know if that's a direct conflict or not. I mean, you know, but but you're right. It, it would be another night out. I mean, I feel like Colleen stepped up to be on the SU board. And I was just so, thinking, I'm like, I'm not, I don't have any periphery duties, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, so, so I would be, I mean, I, it's interesting. I have to, I have to get over a slight skepticism, I have to say, about this process. So I'm just being very transparent about that. I think it's because as part of the Act 46 committee, we did almost this exact same thing. Right. Yeah, we spent true. weeks literally creating mm -hmm. a portrait of a graduate. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it felt, and then it felt like, well, we created all this data, like, and on some level, we all n we know what we need, and we just need to do it. <laughs> but, and I'm only putting that out there because I, I want to be a little mm -hmm. transparent about sort I of will, where um, I am. I, w if if I am the person, I would absolutely embrace the process, and I I would, you know, I would I would do it. Um, so no, I, mean, I come from the skepticism of just strategic I, plans in general. I've been through yeah, many like, of them working in the nonprofit field, and so in the end, I always think of accountability. Like if yeah. we're going to be putting this much of an investment in this process, Both in the time end, and money. Right. how are we making sure this is an accountable process and right. that mm -hmm. we're really doing it? And so how does that work? That would and, be. And we have, I mean, we have the community forum, and we have our radar lists, and we have the. All these <laughs> ways in which we've identified the things we know we need to do. I, um, when do we get to so the this is the place same where thing we do at the <laughs> SU meeting? Um, yeah, because there were other board members that were um, had skepticism, and I think that those of us in this room um, really do have a good handle on this. Um, but 
the community hasn't been part of the dis like they've been discussing it individually with us we've hold forums but right. the <coughs> broader community hasn't had the input and hasn't been part of the discussion and maybe doesn't see the solution yet and so what i'm what i see out of this is that we're identifying six staff members to bring them in and we're identifying six mm -hmm. community six members yep. to right. bring them in yep. to get to maybe where we are. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And so that's kind of how I'm, yeah. and, and I'm you know, totally open. Yeah. Like new things are gonna come out of this and I'm sure that there's yeah. something that we don't, but I think the people Absolutely. in this room really know yeah. what needs to happen. I think that's, we need to bring everybody else. Nikki's really are. hitting the nail on the head and I hadn't honestly hadn't thought about it that way, but perhaps the process is what offers it's more important. Is mm -hmm. offers that's a, yeah, no, that yeah. makes a lot of that yeah, makes a lot of sense. That's, thank you. Um, <laughs> that's that's where I am. And yeah. that's what the administrators have been mm -hmm. saying right along is that we, as we continue to kind of, you know, do some innovative pieces and look at performance-based this and that. I mean, it's okay, but if it had the strength, if that's where we end up, and it has the strength of the community behind it. And I think that's going to, it's just going to be able to uh, exactly. accelerate our ability to get there because now you're saying, no, this wasn't my idea and this isn't the yeah. central mm -hmm. office idea. This, right. we had 60, 70 people around the table exactly. and this is where they came to, this is what they came to. And so this and is what we've got to do. What excited me about when we started. The, like when they first introduced Portrait for Graduate. I was like, finally, a way to bring all those spider webs together that mm -hmm. people understand why we are, are why doing Why we're doing this. what we're doing. Yeah. And we're not just yeah. crazy, right? Yeah. Because I think we know how to get to the 21st century, but I don't know that. And this board, by the way, is very, I mean, you've been incredibly supportive of the work, mm -hmm. certainly that Christine and Brittany have done. And, you know, and, and I, I don't worry about anybody at this table, but I do think there are some folks out there in the community you know, the other thing too is this will be pretty good because it's going to be sort of not only with negotiations will it be parallel, but it's going to be parallel with our budget process, right? So the radar list plus this kind of work, if all of a sudden we're saying we need to, we need this, you know, we need that, you know, it's it's not going to be just oh the board one night right. just thought this yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so good point. Beth, should we um, trust straws? <laughs> well, we should, bring bring for, <laughs> we should bring in um, Colleen too. Oh, I, don't Col want I mean, to Colleen might, the want, might really want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, what is Col Colleen's on the SU board right now? She's, right? Yeah. Right. she's on the SU board, and right. both of us are on the SU budget committee. Who's on the SU board besides you? Are Nikki, right, and Scott, Scott. Okay. Yeah. and Colleen? Yeah. And then both Colleen and well, I are on the SU budget committee. Make more sense when you yeah. take it out. Yeah, but I don't know what Colleen's. So, we'll, yeah, so um, we should maybe do you want to all just okay. email each other yeah, and so figure yeah. it out? Let's yeah. do it. And then let Christine know. Mm -hmm. um. I think that's about it for now, though, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, we just need to get that committee together. Yeah. Are there, should we list out some community members that we want to reach out to, or do people really want to think harder? Uh, I was, I mean, you got someone off the top of your head. Town manager or select board member, that's, I mean, in general, that's be a great place to, mm -hmm. to start. I was, I was I thinking had, the same thing. Yeah. I was thinking of. Okay. Uh, I, for a moment, I thought recreation department head, and I think, well, yeah, I mean, that, could, that would be a resource too. But mm -hmm. Does Dave live in town? David Orm, David Orm, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. I think he does um, now. He does. Not, yeah, yeah. Good, question. Question. Yeah. good question. Okay. Really? Good. Okay. But John Leonard has had a tie to this town for longer, but he's also got kids in the school. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the there's other one, ways to come at it. Yeah. yeah. You, could, you could pick a parent. But both, I think. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you yeah. don't think you have to do either. I She's probably they're... very busy, but who is that other? former board member that showed up at a meeting during mm. our budget oh, process yeah. last time. Susan, name? somebody mm. or other. Do you remember her name? Um, yes, yeah, Susan. Um, probably get it back in the minutes. If we could right. go back in the minutes. I forget yeah. what her name yeah. is. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, and I, I was mean, also Ed thinking Bettina, she was an somebody like board. Bettina, maybe. Bettina or Dan might Emanuel. Wanna, you know, Dan Emanuel, maybe. They're, because he's got, they're, they're moving, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They are. Oh, I did hear that. Yeah. yeah is it right in the middle of this? Um, uh, well, maybe. the house isn't officially for sale yet, so I think it's more sort of but it's out there, but chaos. it's happening, yeah. Yeah. But serious enough that they put an offer on our house in Brownsville, I know that. But it didn't happen, but okay. yeah, they did try that. Um, but I still wonder, because, I mean, he's 
I know he's moving. He's leaving town, but right. Um, Someone with the with the little. Well, bit he's of, got the business he's bank got background. Got that huge business background. Yeah, yeah he, I think he might he might be a good person actually. He might be willing to do it even if they if they're close by. Yeah. That's what um, I'm wondering. I was thinking of somebody like Marianne Postens or who you know a high school teacher, who really understands the you know curriculum at the high school level and the you know. Right. Um, I was trying to think of other people like that who, who you know, who have seen the sort of high school to college process and really yeah. understand deeply, like what are those things that are critical. You got to get yeah. in eight, you know, in K eight, so you can be prepared be for high school for beyond. You know, there's there's like a progression there that would yeah. be really nice to have. I think it'd be nice. We've got to have a professor that lives in town that we could. Yeah. Work who I'm trying to think. Is there one? It must be. Um, yeah, um, I think like Peter Carini is a librarian at Dartmouth. Um, um, who? There must be some. I'm sure we'll we'll, we'll think I about it. I'm sure we can see Dan Lambert's yeah. wife's name. Kathy. Kathy. Kathy would be good, although. Kathy I mean, Lambert. Yeah, they Lambert, don't have yeah. kids in school oh, anymore. Oh no, that's not who I'm thinking about. Uh, it's um. Well, no, Dan. Don. Um, it's really Dan, Dan does. No, they Kate still have kids because of the high school. school. Oh, yeah. Caitlin and Jimmy could be in there. Oh, yeah. there's well, another angle. How about um, um, church yeah. leader? Yeah, I mean, is that yeah he, matter of fact, he mentioned faith based groups. Yeah, both of their faith faith based groups. Yeah. Either Paul or Lucia. I mean, just Don. Don. Yeah. in order to reach out great. to. Is Paul the one? Yeah. Uh, like, how about like one of the three state police officers that live in our town? That would be interesting, too. That's a good idea. Yeah. I thought we had Are you writing right? some of these down, Christine? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, the Sevillas would be a good mm -hmm. hit. Although mm -hmm. they're parents, too. Because, again, those are ones you yeah, could reach Don, out to individually. Yeah. Just, as a business be, owner and Colleen is a professor. Yeah. Like, so either one of them. Either one of them would be good. Yeah. I remember what her. Um, how about um, some of the people that have been part of the whole community initiative? From Do any of the people from Mount of Scutney? Reggie Cooper. Are they, are they, are they from, from our the, community? that committee? Yeah. Um, we did talk today about inviting Courtney. Yes, McKay, exactly. McKay, 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 from Rise. Um, uh, Melanie Sheehan. Melanie. Courtney Hillhouse. Jill Lord, but she'll Jill probably Lord. push it to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's pretty but, busy. Um, what, I was just thinking about Stacy and John as restaurant yeah, owners. They're restaurant owners. What's her um, last name? Caperso. Oh, so they own John. the yeah. Windsor Station. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are parents, but they're and also... They're parents, but they're, yeah. they're Pretty, hiring people. Yeah. They're, you know... Um, I was thinking, I mean, how about our state reps? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have a state rep. Oh, Zach, yeah. Zach, or Zach Ralph would be a good one. Zach, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. And that's not the busiest time for him, right? Because they don't start till That's right. They don't start till January. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, being a young And he sounds like the kind of guy that kind of likes the big, oh, big picture yeah. stuff. Mike Pierce on there? No. Mike Pierce. Who's Mike Pierce. Oh. Because he he's employed a lot of very young adults. Of, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, Nicole. Mike, yeah. What about Nicole Bartner? Plus, isn't he retired now? Yeah. <laughs> Not so really. he's, I think he increased his job. Yeah, he probably did. <laughs> Bartner. Nicole yeah. Bartner, who owns the diner. Yeah. Um, oh, Nicole. She, I, I mean, Nicole. Nicole, Nicole, I know, has strong opinions about, oh, the, life. about what makes teenagers suitable mm -hmm. hires. And she, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Mike um, probably does, too. She might be. Oh, I bet Mike does. Yeah. Yeah. How about one of our librarians, like town librarians? Is Amy already? Well, Amy's already. Amy, Amy will be on. Amy will be there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't as, think Nancy lives in town. As the board. Nancy but doesn't. Um, I'm trying to think. So That's I'm a gonna good beginning. I'm going to interject yeah. the um, thing but we always have to have in front of our faces that's important to our community is the equity of the process. And so and we've all, the, the names that rise to the top of our thought process as business leaders, notables, um, basically leaders, may not represent the whole mm -hmm. yeah, community. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's why I think it's so important. So, so there's other that. categories yeah. like parents, mm -hmm. right? And well, community Plus, members is just general all demographics, yeah. right? Staff members. So yep. did Mike give us um, an indication of more so of what community members should look like? I kind of got the sense that they should be business leaders. Um, 
Yeah, it is a it is a visioning process. Sure, and it yeah. is a, and it is a, and it's a vision and, process. And, and it is, um, kids are going to need to be successful, right? So, so I mean, that's, yeah, it, it is. It does make sense that we're. Yeah. I, I don't remember specifically. I mean, he did say business leaders. Right. Yeah, I thought it was business leaders. Leader, but which well, that was one category. One category. He yeah, yeah, he said Parents. that. Yeah. Parents um, for sure. By community, I think he said business people are good, but I don't think that took away from somebody who, like you said, a Dartmouth professor or. or a yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about who who is going to be determining whether we have been successful in creating right. <laughs> this perfect graduate. Right? It's going to yeah. be higher education officials and right. people who are hiring kids for jobs. I mean, yeah. that's who we're really looking at. So, yeah. Um, and I suppose you could, you know. To the church, the idea of a church, right? Are are, are we yeah. creating civic leaders? Are we creating compassionate members of their communities? Those those things are important too. What about somebody but, from like North Harbor right. Tool or surveyor or something in the more of the trades? Yeah, I think. Do you have a trade person? Lots of automotive. Uh, oh, that's right. Businesses in. Oh, that's right. Muniers or yeah. Um, I don't know any. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Matos. Two kids in the school. Oh, yeah. Tony Matos. Would Tony want to do it? Does he live in town? Yeah. Yeah. Tony, do you know him? I think what Sarah said is is critical. We talked a little bit about that today. You know, that. Matos? Me too. You know, there will be pieces of this where, because we've seen the templates and we've kind of gone through a little of it as a team, but, you know, part of it, they do start a bit with. The economic construct and what's happening in our world, and what percentage mm -hmm. of jobs are going to be these kinds of jobs, and or even do we know what kinds of jobs they're going to be? So, but that em economic engine doesn't address all the time what Sarah talked about. But they do have a human component to this. In other words, so what what do we do about ethical and moral development? Because as we get crazy with technology, we get you know we, we've got to figure out a way to ethically you know deal deal with this because right now. There aren't really good boundaries for all of this stuff, and we've just, you know, you've got. I, I, I was in the Verizon store getting a new phone for my wife, yesterday, and there's a six-year-old in there with his grandmother getting a phone. And I'm thinking to myself, whoa, that's young. And I'll tell you, this kid knew how to move around that phone and was programming his grandmother's whatever. I don't know, but it's just weird stuff. But we better get a handle on this, you know, because it's mm -hmm. it's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. I'll reach out to John and see. Yeah, if you have names. You're yeah. John? Oscar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I don't think I'm signing up my John for something. <laughs> but he might know of some names that. Yeah. Okay. I'll do the same. Yeah. And there's others like retired educators in town. So yeah, that that's what I was just thinking. That those are the names that aren't popping to mind, but I know there's and some I good ones. Just um, this is a thought that just hit me, and so I'm voicing it, even though it's not fully digested. Um, part of me wonders um, generationally what kind of leaders we want to invite. Because I thought of a leader who ran a very successful business with about 30 employees, but it's old school. Right. I mean, that is... And so that's something yeah. that I'm thinking of. Like, an old school portrait of a graduate is very different yeah. from the current. Yep. But that voice is, is, is important, too, right? It is, yeah. Good learning opportunity for them, too, as they sit in those discussion groups. Mm -hmm. Well, an, an interesting, so my husband's a real estate agent, and I don't know if there's, I'm assuming there are probably some in Heartland, but that, people get into that in a very, through very oh, different John routes. Yeah, John Bassett. Um, yeah, John Bassett. So that might be, yeah. Can you get contact? I don't have any idea. He's an interesting guy. I can ask him if he knows of anybody who lives mm. in Heartland. Plus, it would be nice to have a little male-female balance, too, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, if you think of any other names, just send them my way, and I'll okay. reach out. But I'll post, I'll have Linda post tomorrow. Yeah, because others might thing. roll in, and then we okay. can run those by the board and say, Yeah. I'll which of these would you have yeah. tier one, and which would you have tier two? Yep. Does Katie Ledoux live in Hartland? She's related to Angie. Is she related to Yeah, she's a real estate agent. I think she's Windsor, actually. Is she? 
Yeah, because we have Tom Campbell, we have John Bassett. John Bassett. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's, is that it for people operating in Heartland, I think. John was pretty good about coming to the Act 46 meetings. Mm -hmm. He's sent some kids off to some. They, they homeschooled all, yeah, their, they kid, homeschooled. all their kids. Did they really? Yeah. Now yeah. that's an interesting perspective that's an interesting too, right? Perspective. <laughs> that's an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Right through high school? No. After high school, they went to a. I think. I mean, after. A bunch uh, of them got into military <coughs> academy. <coughs> there you all, go. Yeah, they, had their, they homeschooled like eight, nine, ten kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wild. That's mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> and as far as I know, they've all been pretty successful. Yeah. Oh, um, Beth, Beth like, throws the short straw in the view. Because he's got all those connections. And that would actually be a, a good person to be on it. Right. In that case, I, I, agree. I would not. Who is it? Um, Matt, my oh. husband, because he, he's got this, you know, he's doing this nonprofit focused on rural economic development and strategies for. Yeah, I, I, whether he could give up four nights, I don't know, but he right. would be—he would be good. Yeah. yeah. So know, we'll see. And then too. I would. And John, John, John would be good. <laughs> um, John hires people for machining, but he'll never forgive you, Nick. No, he'll never forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a night out together, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're already doing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other Heartland mini committees. Um, Okay, so all right, we'll, all right, we'll think about it. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, forum. Unless we want to do the SRO so we can just wrap up with the forum. We yeah, could do quick. that. Yeah. Yep. And Amanda Hall's quick, too. So yep. You know what's okay. not quick, but it right. could be quick. Do you want to do the SRO update? Yeah. Yeah. Christine, so, do you want to take it? Yeah. yeah. So we have a signed contract. We were waiting for the Windsor. Um, Board of select the select That's board. That's done. Yeah. 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 So we have it finalized. It's all signed, finalized. Yep. Um, so I've sent out um, emails for staff and the community members that volunteered or offered to be on the committee, and waiting to hear back with confirmation from a couple of them. And if they can't, I haven't sent out the um, email to parents that weren't selected yet. I'm waiting to see if others can't do it, and then. I'll invite them. So we're going to meet on September 3rd, 4.30 to 5.30 for an initial meeting. David and I are just going to kind of map out um, guiding questions. We're going to frame mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. Wednesday. Um, as part of that, we did we did talk about having a meet and greet off, off school grounds at some point, I recall, mm -hmm. right? Didn't oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll put that on our list of mm -hmm. Things to talk about, but um, we'll uh, go from there. I mean, we're not really planning much with the SRO at this point until we get that flushed out. So, great. are you going to do assemblies like we talked about? Are you going to do the middle school assembly? We or are, but we didn't. Um, we haven't. We haven't um, invited the person yet. We're just trying to be. Sensitive to that sensitive committee. and I think it's probably a good idea, right? Yeah, yeah. we're just trying to be sensitive sense. about it. Yeah. And I think we can do it this time without somebody there and yep. you know, if we start to see some stuff bubble, we can certainly invite him. Right. <laughs> yeah. I admit. Yeah. What is his name again? Oh uh, god. Paul Favreau. Paul, yeah. Paul Favreau. Oh, F A V I mean, A R E A U Favreau. Paul Favreau. I think when things probably get a little settled and flushed out, you know, we're having the middle school is the big one, I yeah. think, and yeah. so, but but sure. we're having like community building assemblies every Friday, so mm -hmm. I think it would be great to have to introduce him join him. at some point, right. and, you know, come in more of like a part of the community. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, playing with them instead of yeah, I'm here to right. talk about. Building that's things. a good idea. Right. <laughs> I think that is a good idea. So, but yeah. well, so we have those all the time, so there's flexibility yeah. there. So I mean, the good news is starting, and I don't know, did we, you and I talked about, do we have to let dispatch know, but maybe I'll just I talked to the chief about that. He said he would take care of it. He would take care yeah. of it? But maybe a reminder just to make sure it's all set. Okay. It would be good. Yeah. But so I calls, 911 calls would get directed to the Windsor yes. PD. And yep. then you would ought to, I mean, you can have his cell phone to yeah. or Paul's cell phone. Yeah. And make the call directly. Yeah. Because that's what, you know. 
not the most important, but one of the right. ones we wanted to make sure that you had prompt response time. Right. And, yeah. And um, well, that's why I think saying you know it's it's not necessarily an SRO contract. I would say we need to start calling it just our security contract, yeah, right. police services, mm -hmm. right. police servicing contract, because I feel like that's just like I don't mm -hmm. know an eighth of really what we're getting out of it. Yeah. 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 And a matter of fact, yeah. I think that's how we titled the memorandum of agreement: police services. Fund. Police services. Yeah. Did everyone see it? Did I send you, you a sent final it around. signed copy or not? Um, you did. Well, yeah. You sent the copy. You did. I know I sent the final copy. From Tom so Marsh, I think. So is that the final signed copy? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to take a peek at it. Yeah. Yep. Is that a signature? Yep. Yes. Yeah, good. Okay. Does. I thought I sent it to you. Yeah. They are all signed. Good. Yep. yep. So that's more. Yeah, you got you. Yep. Moving forward with that. Excited. All right, good. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll report we'll back how, how that committee work um, goes. Great. I know the chief really wants this to work, obviously. And David, you're going to be there on the third, right? I'm going to come to that meeting. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So Nikki, okay. you, do Nikki you don't coming? want to come? Good. I mean, you, you, more than welcome. I did. And you gave me uh, the date, right? It's in my calendar. It's the third at 4:30. What? Yeah. What's that? I'll, I'll invite the you, third David. At I think you did already, but maybe you didn't. Yeah. I don't know if I sent you a calendar invite though. I don't think I did. No, maybe not. I'll send you one. Nikki, do you have one? You have it in your calendar already? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you have the um, Amanda letter, David? Oh, I do. Okay. Did I send that to everybody or no? No. no. I don't know what that is. Going. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it was actually an email, okay. not a letter, but I can. That's it's exciting news. I can read it. It is. Yeah. It is exciting Okay. News. Yeah. It's not bad news. Okay. 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 Sorry. I, I mean, you get, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I can read it to yeah. everybody. I uh, hope you're having a great summer. I have some exciting news that I believe Christina shared with you. My husband and I are expecting our first child. Oh, yeah. oh that's great. Isn't that that's great? awesome. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. I'm due in January. I wanted to let you know about my maternity leave. It's my understanding that maternity leave is for six weeks of possible paid leave and then six weeks of unpaid leave, which is exactly how family medical leave right now works. Uh, but I am writing in hopes of extending that leave through the end of the year. So uh, that's her request, essentially, of this board. And so then the her, half of the year. Yeah, yeah and she so. says transitions can be very challenging for kindergartners, and I think it might be in the best interest of the students if they had me the first half of the year and another teacher the second half of the year. Yeah. Uh, going back and forth between teachers can be hard. Um, I would love and appreciate. Uh, I would also love and appreciate this time with the new baby. Mm -hmm. I understand that this request needs to be brought to the school board, which I told her. So, mm -hmm. so that's why it's in front of you tonight, um, because it's basically she's asking for a leave. Of, of, you know, so she's essentially asking for April and May. She's asking pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Although because I she think she would get September. Or she would she's get doing January, January to January. April. Yeah, she'd yeah. get. Yeah, twelve weeks is a fairly long time, right? That's. Close to three months, mm -hmm. January, yeah, March. Yeah. Sort of so May, she's asking April, May, and, June. and a little bit yeah. of June. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. June. So when's it going to start? May, June. So it would. So I think mid January. She, I think she. Yeah. Is that what she said? So she she's thinks she'll come back uh, after the break. After the break. I mean. I mean that might be good to clarify with her. Yeah. Of uh, course she ha Once she submits that formal paperwork, go. then yeah. we'll know yeah. the exact start date. Yeah. But. I got the impression that maybe she was just thinking, hey, look. She may. I can't First remember her exact due date. But okay. um, it would kind of make sense to do. And it would be easier to hire yeah. somebody, somebody yeah. for that whole for the, for the yeah. rest of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll post it right as soon as we have your decision. We'll just start with it. Um, yeah, I mean. So that would just take a motion of the board to approve that extended maternity leave. So the way it would work is we would be paying. You'd um, be paying us. Sub, we'd be but paying, not paying her. A sub. We'd be paying both of them for six weeks, and then we would just be paying the sub. For Correct. The remainder right. Of and that's their si that's their sick leave. We would be doing that right. regardless if she took the extended leave or not. Right. Yeah. Right. Because right. right. exactly. 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 Yeah. 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 Six weeks. And who knows the sub? You know, could make less than her in the end. Right. It could end up being financially okay for you. Are there? This is just a question that's kind of unrelated, but are there teaching programs that end in January? Yeah. Yeah. Depends yeah, some, when you some know, kids yeah. graduate in Because they're required to have a January. teaching certificate. Mm -hmm. Aren't they, they are. They yeah, they work for that long yeah. period of time. Yeah. What? You, uh, for Valley Educators Institute. Yeah. It's kind of staggered and stuff. Yeah, they yeah. staggered. Yeah, so right. That's right. That might be a good place to so that So that might be appealing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the right time. Yeah. I guess what's coming to my mind is to make sure that 
leadership is okay with it. While on board with like the implications of an extended leave for one employee and mm -hmm. yeah, right. That's so why I asked for Steve. Yeah, does it really make sense Amanda to came. We talked it, talked through it. I do support it. Um, David and I mm -hmm. chatted about it. Um, it makes sense at the <coughs> kindergarten level. Um, I, I feel comfortable. I mean, she has a wonderful paraprofessional in that room, mm -hmm. Mary, Mary, who will step up and help, um, and, a, and an excellent teaching partner, and the other kindergarten teacher who will also help with planning oh, and yes. whatnot. So I feel comfortable. That's good point, Scott, because we'll have students. Yeah. But, you know, yes. from, 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 from the other staff members. Time from the other staff members. Yeah, like, right. as far as things are fair. I think part of it is timing, too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Part of it is timing. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've done this before. And it's unpaid. Yeah. It's unpaid. Yeah. It's unpaid. unpaid. And she knows that. I mean, we talked about that. Um, so, yes, it, yeah. it does it's kind exciting. of set a precedent. You're right. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to think about that. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. In terms of how many other staff members might. I mean, there was a similar request, it. if I'm recalling, um, Ms. Driscoll several years ago. I think we've done this before. We have. Yeah. That think, was before me. Yeah. I think it was before your time, yeah. but I think it might have been her, yeah. What you <coughs> haven't approved, and rightly so, is we've had some creative approaches to the yes. six, the 12 weeks. How about yes. if I take one day a week and mm -hmm. for the whole we year? And, and I think those were <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. So. Which we denied. We denied that request. Yeah. yeah. OK. But I think this is legitimate. Yeah. And it's not going to cost you any more than it would cost you anyway. Right. And she's clearly thinking about the kids and what's best for the right, kids. Right, which is nice, yeah. 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 Um, and I, I agree with her that that makes sense. So. Yeah. I would move that we approve this request for leave. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving Amanda Hall's request for leave uh, extended through the end of the school year, uh, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Abstentions? Approved. She will be thrilled. I'll yeah. let her know. Okay. And I'll talk with her. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, congratulations yeah. from all of us. Yeah. I will. It's really sure. exciting. Does she live in town? She does not. No, she lives, she lives, she lives in Barnard. Where does she live? Barnard. 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 Mm -hmm. That may be part of it, too. It's a drive. Yeah. It's a drive, yeah. It's like 40 minutes, right? Yeah. 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 She'll get there eventually. Yeah. I mean, the scary part is, you know, and it's perfectly fine, but. We've had this happen, and then they just and then they don't love, come back. They right? love being with the baby, you know. <laughs> and I can completely relate to that. That's that's hard to do. Her intention is to come back. I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah, okay. drag me kicking and screaming. What's it? <laughs> yeah. You seriously? Oh, I, yeah. I didn't want to go back. <laughs> I still don't. You still don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all think that hasn't <laughs> changed. <laughs> <laughs> I was begging for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all not, about personality. I am not a baby person. Some people are. Some people can't say Do you want me to do a little insulting? <laughs> I can it's start a little early. I can start dark, Monday. You know, it was intention. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I would walk around Kmart for hours. <laughs> with just no to get out. List, nothing to buy. Just, just to walk. Just to walk. Just to be. Yeah. Random conversations. Hey, how you doing? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kid needed people too. Yeah, yeah. So that's true. It wasn't just me. Um, okay, so I think we're on the All right. All right. So I sent you. I shared the electronic document with you today that Linda had created for us. Yeah. Right. With all of the. Um, a summary of all the things that were listed on the chart on the chart paper. Um, I did make a couple copies if people prefer paper. If anybody wants it on paper, I've got it here. Anybody want paper? No, we're all sitting here. Thank you. I think I can find it. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. What's the title? You, Pub public just like forum. Public forum notes. I'll share it with you again, David. Yeah, if you want to do that, then yeah. I'll pull it up and I'll also sure. send it to Diane too, because then sure. she can attach it. Yeah. yeah. I will do that. Two B's. Brittany. <laughs> oh, in the document? Uh, oh, well, they're different colors on my computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
So I don't. How are you thinking about doing this, Nikki? Just that's what I'm trying to think about. <laughs> reading yeah. through and seeing if there are any trends or things that pop out over and over again. Um, this is quite a few. This is a long time ago, Sarah. It was. You know, I know. Taking, taking our notes. <laughs> I know. Like, God bless <laughs> Linda for being able to. <laughs> well, she typed it up a, a long time we ago. Like I mean, we were just, I just remember like yeah, writing exactly. so fast because people were talking so much. Exactly. No. Um, oh. Yeah. Well, do we want to go through yeah, topic by topic, or uh, how do you guys want to review this? I don't recall actually what we were trying to get at. I mean, by reviewing, identifying theme, trends or? and themes that sort of rose to the top was sort of the point of this. Yeah. Um, and I mean, definitely there were some that jumped out for me and probably for, for the rest of you. Yeah. I mean, should we go around and everyone list the things, that just kind of say the things that really jumped out for them reading this over? Well, we See if they match up. Yeah. We take minutes to read, to read it, over. it over? That might be a good idea. I read this like two I months ago, two. three months ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I went through it when it was sent out, but yeah. not um, it's been a long time. No. Well, this is, the, this is my confusion, Christine. Like, what, could you help me understand where I was that night? Yes. What, so you Sarah and I were, were doing the middle school. That's what I remember about it. <laughs> we were, we were on the, what is your vision for the future of, I mean, that, that wasn't, I think we called it something else, right? We called it. Um, so the it first topic called. was music and theater, right? Oh, yeah. The second topic was providing equitable academic programs for all learners. I think that's okay. where that you was first yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. And then uh, okay. and the third topic was co-curricular learning opportunities. Okay. So she right. has put a heading, topic one, topic yep. two, but you have to kind now of scroll through. Those. Now I see Yeah, that. you want to do that part since you're There's in there? There's like a bunch of... It seems like some, some of this is not mixed up. It does. Because this is theater, but here they're talking it's about special about education and related yeah, services that's and stuff. That's where I'm confused. So it's like something got. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we could look at the we could look at the actual. That's what I was wondering. Things. If we wanna, do we have places to post these? That's kind of strange. You're right. You know what? Um, well, we're all set up for mics here. For what? I was just thinking, over there we can put it all over the bookshelves, but the microphones are here. Um, there were three Would it topics. Would help to put it up on the okay. board or not? I don't know. Oh, I see. I you mean the sheets. Paper. Yeah. How about using the um, screen? Yeah. Yeah, tape should we? Just tape, yeah. tape a tape couple on the screen that we can look oh, at for know, each. Yeah. Let's have them by topic. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're still sticky. So there's right? music and theater yeah, first. I'm letting you do that. So music I'm not and theater in trouble. was the first topic, right? That was the And what you're saying, Brittany, oh, you know is why? it looks like other things. These Something got mixed up because it says oh, there are many corners. SPED reading specialists, whatever, yeah, and that's under and like supports and things, and that's under the music and theater, so that yeah, should be down right. under. Yeah. I feel like that was in ours. Those those two things were, I remember those things being really mentioned. It should be under exactly. providing our equitable session. academic programs, I think. Um, so actually, all of that top part there, the okay. A, B, number one, C, Where would those two, go? three, Hold on, I'll move them. should go under You're so gonna take care of it, topic yep. two, providing equitable academic programs for all learners. Yeah. And I'm just cleaning up the format a little bit by highlighting and underlining yeah. where, am I, where am I putting it? Topic two? Under so topic two. Yeah, and I think it can go right up at the top maybe yeah, because at the top. that seemed to be the um, the things. And then I'm going to delete. Yeah. I yeah. agree with you, sir. Are you grabbing it now? Yeah, I'm doing it. Just hold on a second. one. Come on. Well, it's... <laughs> My screen, it, when I do the highlighting, it like jumps down pages. Really? So, yeah, so then I end up with like a bunch of highlighted that I do not want highlighted. <laughs> I don't, did, was there a group that talked That's about fine. IEPs? Yeah. Well, our group did. That was that part? The equity group. 
the this. equity group talked yeah, about getting my, high income. Oh, so that was like a That's topic. my handwriting there. So that was number two. Oh, okay, that's all two. We had a lot. We had a lot. Yeah. Okay. And then Scott wrote some too. So that's yeah, your writing. That's down your down handwriting, right, Scott? Okay, okay that makes sense. Okay. Well, we guys should act as group. Yeah. yeah, ours was... Generate so a lot of info. Ours was really talkative. <laughs> I'm the one who switches between cursive and printing. Um, <laughs> that was me. I do, I do too. <laughs> You're not the only one. That's, that's music. Yeah, that's my handwriting. It's music, but this is more important than music. This is your favorite notes. <laughs> uh, that's that, more. Is that you? Yep. Okay, that's music. So okay, we're getting there. You made that change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't quite like that, but just so oh, much. Okay. Uh, no, 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 excuse list. me. Do do no. Not. One year. What happened? Okay. And then there's yeah. our wish list, right? We got started frozen oh, wait, the time of, of the, the cake. <laughs> of the <laughs> cake. You know, they're trying to keep it cold for a few days if they enjoyed it. <laughs> so there were three groups. Is that what I'm no, hearing? No, I don't think we did that. Three, three groups, yep. Yeah. So we had a, at that point, we had a truck where they just uh, needed to find some cap on it. Yeah. It was like a tall cap. So we called it our camper. You know, yeah, it was good. Threw a mattress in the back, and yeah. we were gone. Good to go. No kids at that point. Okay, now this reads a little bit better. Yeah, it's, okay. it's actually really helpful to look at it because I now I, I remember. I now I remember like who said what and how what the context was and. Um, so did we fix that document? Move well, yeah, I, did. I moved did. something. Yeah. Okay. The, um, All that sped uh, stuff. I, sped stuff went under this topic. Topic yeah. two. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. That was um, a busy night. For it was a really busy that. night. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long night. Um, apparently, I can't write the straight line either. <laughs> I couldn't spell. <laughs> I can dare someone to analyze your handwriting. You're like yeah, up and down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, should we? Should how about the group? people that? Like yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Group? Each yeah. group present what the sort of takeaways were. Was yeah. Colleen? Oh, but do you guys I represent? Were, okay, we were Christine. With okay. Yeah. We were number three. Okay. I, I, I was with Sarah and Scott. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, I can start with yeah, music, or you want to start? Um, uh, it seemed like overall there was a huge support for the upper grades drama program and mm -hmm. drama club. There was a real like desire for that, um, and also a real desire for kind of a more in, a more intentional, more intense music for elementary. Yes. Um, I don't know, drama was also good, it was more of a, it got emotional, like it was very like people yeah. um, really was, saying for them that's where their kids really fit in, and that was a real, and the way um, the instructor approached it, it was very um, inclusive and very, all the different cliques that there may be there were able to come and be under one roof and mm -hmm. very equal, and that's why it was kind of such a special time um, in really wanting to see, and then hearing from younger parents kind of like like well what can we do to try to get some of more of that kind of activity happening at the elementary school level yeah. and then a lot of it came down to logistics of like the pulling kids from academics for music um, and it conflicting a lot with um, sports as well mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how to balance those kinds of things I'm sure there's there's yeah I think there was um a desire to make the younger grades, um, I, I think I wrote, more passion in music class, younger grade. Mm -hmm. um, that there were a lot of families that felt like music was a checkbox on the younger grades, and then you got to the upper grades, and it was a, a, a whole more holistic experience. Um, and so there was a desire to bring that out in the younger grades. And then there was also... Um, one of the comments was to um, introduce kids, but because of the way our music is structured um, and we don't have drama in the younger grades, when we do our drama club, when it does go to showtime in the middle school, the kids have never been up on stage and have never really performed. Um, and so the K2 is out there and performing, but then by 3-5, they're um, getting those inhibitions and, and aren't 
ready to stand on stage and then we're getting all of that self-consciousness and then by 6 8 we're we don't have the ability to bring ourselves out again it seems like they really lost that wheel of feeding into the really quality dramatic programs yeah yeah so it laid, like, we've been talking about that a little bit at, at this point the concerts that which is the performance piece the practice yeah. piece um is i mean k2 are expected to to be there mm -hmm. three five is Chorus, so it's not really stressed that they come and perform. They don't actually prepare to perform as a class, um, and I think that's an easy thing we can change. Yeah, that they should be practicing to be at the concert. They, we we can't make them come, but at least they're. But I think they should be practicing in the practice music. part for a performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, preparing for a performance, whether they show up or not, they're they're developing those skills. Yeah, and I know I've heard. Old, parents with older kids to talk that we had a 3-4 drama program there mm -hmm. was a 3-4 play um, until we brought until the position was cut was cut okay. and so I think there's a strong feeling that people would like to go back to having a 3-4 play because it's um, it helps develop those it skills. helps develop right well, why, and the why drama is 3-4 why isn't 3 why is it 3-5? Five? Well, 5 is part of the drama club. Yeah. They get to they do, the do the drama club. Middle school, yeah. yeah. But is drama club even, ha that was the thing, but drama club wasn't happening. It didn't happen last, last year, but year. it will be happening next this year. year. Right. Yeah, this coming year. Sorry, not next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, For, but it is fifth through eighth, eighth graders. Through eighth. Yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. third and fourth graders. So when you said position, th there was a drama club for three and four then at one time? Right. Yeah. With a paid position? When we when had we two full-time, because we had yeah. two full-time music mm -hmm. theater teachers. Okay. And then at some point, one, one of those positions was cut down to a half a position. Half, half a position. It's two days. It's point yeah. four. And it's point four. So when that happened, the, mm -hmm. it just was impossible to, to maintain the 3-4 drama. And it was restructured. So one, the full-time person is instrumental. Right. And then the part-time is K... Eight choral, but the six eight is chorus, and that right. the participation in that program is was zero this year. Right. Yeah. And then three five um, is also an optional chorus, and we worked really hard to get that chorus time uh, not during recess, which might help mm -hmm. kids choose to um, participate because they don't have to give up recess. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. I think um, having having them um, be a, at least expected to participate in a concert or practicing for a concert yeah. mm -hmm. is a start with the resources mm -hmm. we have. Um, mm -hmm. But going forward, I don't, I, did you get a sense of people want that program to grow? Are they willing to? Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, I mean, a lot of feedback positively around. The kind of extra things that happened in the younger grades, like ukulele mm -hmm. and pound fit, and I forget what else there was. Drumming. Um, and drumming in general. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. how how can those be extended and get a little deeper, and those mm -hmm. kinds of things as well. Of just like these are really engaging and fun, um, and the kids really like it, and then it disappears. They get like hooked, and then it's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think um, there was a lot of support for okay. the programming that we have that's going well mm -hmm. and there's a desire for more passion which it may need more time yeah um, okay yeah um, so that summarizes yeah us. and we can make some small tweaks this year but it's good for yeah planning for the future as well mm. Hey, do you want to, you want to go two? first? Do you want to go first? Well, you guys had the longest <laughs> list. You go, yeah, you go, you go first, and I'll, I'll, I'll clean, clean up. Christine, I just bold face <laughs> italicized. They wrote bigger. Yeah, <laughs> we did. I know. I left a lot of space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, topic tiny. two was wild, huh? <clears throat> there were strong feelings. Um, yeah, there were strong feelings, and so. What were the prompts again? Um, equitable learning opportunities for all learners. So I guess I don't want to say them something like it all boiled down to. So I'm, 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 <laughs> the caveat would be the things that stand out, that stood out to me. I don't know if I can accurately or fairly like recall for everyone like every, everything that was that I heard, but I think one of the themes was 
is from the community, and I've heard this more than once, and from other voices, we've heard it as a board before, that there are a lot of investments made for students that have formalized, identified needs. And some parents and some community members feel as though their students who don't have formal needs identified um, don't have enough reading help or what am I looking up up there is that fair to say Sarah yeah Maybe I think there was a sense of that there are some kids who kind of you know don't qualify for for special education but still need something and aren't and maybe you know and, and I think parents were sort of acknowledging that it's hard it's hard with allocating resources but they yes. sometimes feel like those kids get mm -hmm. you know fall through the cracks or whatever um, the other sort of summing that I could do is that I felt like that I heard that parents were desiring again th I should say community because I don't even know if everyone who was there was a, a parent um, there was a desire for uh, I, I will use the word rigorous middle school yeah. environment yep. mm -hmm. um, yeah. like mm -hmm. what I'm not sure I, I didn't just I'll just leave it at that um, somehow they had an idea what that was and I'm not sure mm -hmm. I can like regurgitate that now but yeah, makes sense. you know more <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I think both of those things also stood out. From were you were you done? Was there yes, I am. Go okay. ahead. I mean, I'll probably think of something else. Th yeah, feel free to feel, feel free to jump in. Um, yeah, I think both of those things were definitely things that we heard sort of more than once. Yeah. Um, that yeah, the par uh, the parents or community members felt that students who didn't who don't have IEPs may still need some intervention, and can we do more of that? Um, and then I think there, I also heard a strong sense of, you know, we used to do more enrichment that, you know, last, they felt like last year kids were getting pulled out during fit time to, to do some, you know, if they needed an extra challenge or if they needed enrichment that that wasn't happening this year. Um, and that it, it, there were people who sort of mentioned, you know, at times in the past, there was a better, um, they, they felt that there was a better, um, method for challenging the advanced learners i think yes. that was something yeah. that we heard right. Right. we heard from quite a few people right. and they felt that that has kind of gone equity, away equity at that equity at that, at that, at that and right at there that, were parents yeah. who kind of expressed that they didn't feel there was equity at that end of mm -hmm. the spectrum um i think we d we did hear that uh, just this thing about the middle school that um we've been talking a lot about and hearing a lot about that parents are, are concerned about whether kids are prepared for high school and the math we talked about the math and I think at that point we were able to they, they did know that algebra one will be offered for the eighth grader so we were able to talk about that a little bit and people people were very excited about that there was some concern about the transportation time and will our kids That's be right. missing out on That's instructional good. time and how is that all going to work and um, so th I think just the, obviously that yeah. we'll, we just have to see and you know they'll the proof will be in the pudding right. for, for them um, and and then concern about um, will the seventh will the sixth and seventh graders be prepared so that when they get to eighth grade they'll be ready to take algebra one mm -hmm. does our curriculum support that progression um, was a question that we couldn't answer but we okay. wrote it down <laughs> um, and let's see. Beha that we heard that parents are disturbed by some of the behaviors, mm -hmm. and that they feel it's impacting learning, um, which is no surprise to <laughs> to any of us in this room. Um, I think. Oh, and wanting to bring back things like the chess club and the robotics team and. It was interesting. We heard that, and it looks like you also yeah. heard that in the co-curricular. So that um, the chess club was really popular, and for whatever reason, that really created. I, I think it created like a great little kind of 
you know, intellectual community at the school, mm -hmm. and there was something about that that, that going um, all the way down, like, like all the way down to the kinder. There were kindergartners who were competing against fifth graders, yeah. and like it just was this great mm -hmm. like. Oh. Um, so that kind of that rose to the top, I think. Was um, that an after school club? It was an after. Yeah, it was part of the heart program. Yeah. Yeah. So that's obviously that's something that we'll maybe talk about. But yeah. Um, what are did I forget anything? No, I think Scott? you. No, I think you hit the, hit the us, points, yeah. and between us, we fairly represented what was said. Yeah. <coughs> okay, we were the third group, um, and I think we heard kind of similar things around just providing in general opportunities for kids in the community that are enriching. Um, people really supported that. Um, brought up the heart program, um, which was, to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, funded in the local budget. People were paid to provide um, six-week uh, activities for kids, and it was Wasn't staffed. Wasn't that paid with Title I, I. Jeff started it with Title I yeah, funds, but then I think you're right, it, it sort of migrated. Yeah. It was about, I, I did a little research, it was around $50,000 okay. um, to fund it, mm -hmm. and um, it, some of the, and it seemed like a wonderful, one, there were wonderful opportunities for kids, but staffing it and the behaviors became a real challenge yeah. in the building. Yeah. Um, so those were some of the things we talked about. But people, you know, we, we were trying to brainstorm um, resources that we could tap into to provide at least something after school, yeah. maybe a chess club. And people had mentioned um, uh, uh, students at Dartmouth, maybe needing community mm -hmm. service or even high school students. High school students, or. yeah. Um, coordinating volunteers in the community. Um, aging in aging in Heartland mm -hmm. as a place to maybe reach out for um, volunteers to come in into the school. Mm -hmm. I think. You know the Growing Change program in Dartmouth does their it's a volunteer program. They do a lot of work with Dothan Brook, and they teach like gardening and nutrition education and things like that. Um, growing the change. Yeah. Okay. And I can get you a contact. Yeah, that was guys. great. That'd be great. So the, I, I don't think we were surprised by the takeaway, <laughs> takeaways from our, from our um, topic that we discussed. Um, you know, there has been, I don't know if it was that night, but um, talk about enhancing the rec program as well, mm -hmm. because that provides an opportunity after school for kids. Yeah. And mm -hmm. how do we go about doing that? Um, yeah. And then there is that equity piece, right? That's a parent-funded program. No. People have to pay to send their kids there. Mm -hmm. um, so just think, you know, keeping things like that in mind. We want we want all kids to be able to participate, right? If they want to. Yeah. So <coughs> how to make that happen? Because people have talked about, well, why don't you, you know, you could start a club and charge the kids. Oh, sure, right. we could, yeah. but yeah. that that isn't really um, mm. equitable. And, and there's also the transportation piece. I mean, if we're if we're offering an after-school program, there are kids that are not going to be able to participate because they don't have a ride home. Yeah. So just things to keep in mind. Yeah. And um, thinking about programming. Yeah. Any big thoughts? Yeah, I I was wondering if there, that that was going to be a part of this discussion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your so thoughts. I, I yeah. had I did see the head butting something. Not, I didn't see this, but I'm picked myself. I'm was sugaring it down. This may be unfair, but um, the two things that stuck out to me that were really at odds were what we have heard as a board and as a community before that how much we value the K through 8 school and students and families relationship with the school and the school leaders for that duration of time and 
but at the same time I see that there's I'm not pulling the right word here but the, um, the challenge in the middle school is real and the desire or what I again what I think I heard that night was when I say more rigorous middle school is something that more mirrors I'm going to use the word traditional middle school I mean perhaps more offerings perhaps more something that's more like high school mm -hmm. for that is what I heard did, did you hear anything I, like that Sarah I didn't interpret it that I mean that's entirely possible that that's yeah. what people meant but I what I heard more was just around m more effective instruction I think okay um, and just kind of you know really um, I, I perhaps better differentiated instruction I mean I think that's what I, I, I didn't necessarily, yeah I didn't hear people talking about like we need I mean I think everyone understands that we're trying to move away from tracking so there was a sense of you know we don't need two you know we don't need two of these classes we just need the one that we have to be very rigorous and effective um, and to, to have really high standards for our students. I think yeah. that was something that yeah, people right. said, you know, mm -hmm. getting rid of homework, I don't know, it's easier at home, but I don't know that it's been a good thing for the kids. You know, I mean, I think that, that was something that I really heard, that people feel Higher like accountability, when yeah. they get to high school, they're, they're just not, they haven't put in the, 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 the hours and time to learn those study skills and they you know I, I that, that was something I heard but but I all, I am completely open to the idea that some people intended to say that they you know want bigger and, and more um, that, that is something um, Gene did do the um, high school focus groups um, he went and visited okay. and he's collected yep. data and he will get that into some format for us to look at yeah. But just in general, I said to him, so what did you learn? And he said, kids um, in high school reported that they need homework in middle school to prepare them for, to yeah. get for, the high, mm. for, the, for, the, for the homework they're given in high school. Yeah. And we know it needs to be meaningful. It needs to be things that they can do at the right you know, challenge level. We don't want kids going home with homework that they can't do, obviously. That's a really frustrating um, thing. But there is a balance. And yeah. especially, you know, seventh and eighth grade, um, yeah, to get them ready. So that was one of his takeaways. Yeah. I'm sure he'll and bring us real consequence and, and real consequences for not doing it. Uh, I think yeah. is, a, is a key mm -hmm. part of all of this because that's what I that's what I hear from the eighth graders in my life. Yeah. Like, well, you know, you can you have until the end of the year to get all your work in. There aren't really deadlines. So I did. T I did bring this up at an admin meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, how he, other schools are handling uh, uh, the way I've heard them refer to as retakes and redos, and mm -hmm. you know, in a, in the hybrid proficiency-based traditional grade systems that uh, that I'm aware of, um, there are some parameters around that. I mean, you have so long if you get a certain, you know, if you scored two. You can go and retake something, mm -hmm. but you can't retake it in June if you learned it, you know, if it was coming around in September. Right. And I get the whole growth mindset and kids are going to develop those skills right. at, at their own pace, but I think middle schoolers take advantage of that, yep. many yeah. of them. Well, I don't have to do it now because I can do it in June and still get credit for it. Right. So just, um, you know, how to work that system so that there are accountability. Well, I think that it's also nice. supporting the teachers in yeah. saying this is what our standards are and this is what we're doing and then yeah. we're not doing retakes there and it's not just one stern teacher that goes for that, you know, that no, everybody's kind no, of but I, I did, feeling that same way. No, but I did ask and at the other schools in the SU, it is driven by the classroom teacher because it depends on the coursework that you're doing and sometimes it's more appropriate, you know, to have a two week period to get that retaken or sometimes it's longer because it's a concept that mm -hmm. you know okay. is threaded through the whole entire year and you're yeah. gonna it's gonna come back again mm -hmm. but um, yeah there uh, there are kids that are not doing their work in this school and yeah. what are the and consequences and it's a great question um, yeah so we can't uh, we can't I mean we're a little bit bound by policy I mean we can't hold them in 
during break. From recess, you mean. We can't, right? Um, we don't keep them after school to do their work as a practice. So it's it's really a, a great question, and I don't I don't and I so think we are, struggle with it. I think there is. They some, can get a, a one on their report card. I mean, we've tried doing some things like. Um, st study halls. So, Assigned like, study I would halls. map out all the kids in the missing work list, and you're assigned to these study halls, which had very strict rules about you know you're, you're not talking, you're not you're nothing, right. you are doing your you're work, doing and that's work. it. And then while this other group might get to have more free time, like mm -hmm. they read for a little while, and then they get to talk with their friends, they get to go outside yeah. or whatever it might be. If they're caught it was up on their work, not really yeah. a motivator. Yeah. It didn't work. It didn't. No. Not for the it kids that were the chronic. Um, it didn't decrease our numbers no. in terms of missing work at all. And, and we have a sports connection. Like we do. If you are missing work, yep. you're not. Allowed well, to miss for for Heartland, you. Well, it's no. It, that's not exactly how it went. So last year, the policy was if you were on the missing work list, you had two weeks to make it up, and then you were supposed to start missing practice time. I don't know if that was ever enforced because it's not. It's, it's, it's not us. It's you know right. I give all the information to the rec director, who then is in charge of getting that information to the coach and whatever. I know he would encourage students to go to the after the homework, homework club, club and things like that. Um, so we need to make sure that that connection is held. This year we did, we did change. We did change it a little bit. So if they're on the missing work list, they're required to go to homework club. And our new rector, um, athletic director, says that he'll Enforce make sure that. that they they're there and if they're not there then they're not playing in games you know okay. until mm -hmm. but that's not all the kids no it doesn't no. So a that very small percentage. A small that's yeah. a very small percentage if, yeah it's if somebody a, has Wednesday. all ones at yeah, the end of the year <laughs> do they, they graduate, do like? they move on to the next yeah. grade or we I mean I know that that we don't you know holding kids back has huge implications right. and we don't yeah. want typically, to do that as much but they, typically so even if you had all ones on your report card you would be elevated to the next grade? I mean, I don't think any student had all ones, so I don't know. I mean, but we were really fine saying but we would, somebody would leave Heartland Elementary in eighth grade and head to high school with four ones and a two and be see I mean, no, no, we're not fine with it. But there's not a whole control. lot you can do. I mean, so like we could hold them back, but like you said, the implications of right. holding back like an eighth grader from going to high school Pretty detrimental. is would be Drop devastating yeah. in Some terms of, of know that. social, oh. emotional, yeah. right, and, and to their self-esteem oh, and yeah. everything. But <laughs> it, it is, yeah. I mean, is there do? a middle ground where kids mm -hmm. are turning work in because they, because if I was also a high school, I would not pressure. want to accept that student, right. you know, so why, I mean, do these right. students, what's the process of them going and saying, oh, I want to go to Hartford High? You know, and do they just? They can. They can refuse, can't they, David? Mm -hmm. uh, high school uh, yeah, can, they re can refuse uh, high kids. High school doesn't have to take. It. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's also looking they at what the requirements are in so local high schools. Well, as everyone well, is desperate for students as well. I mean, just that's why keep that in mind. No. We, yeah. right. we have declining enrollment, so people want students. Mm -hmm. It's just part of mm -hmm. where we're at. Mm -hmm. But you know, the other side of this, which I think was part of the middle school discussion that night. And it does come up because it's, co it's it's come up a couple of times in our pre portrait of graduate mm -hmm. planning. Is that kids tend to get motivated when the learning is Engage. relevant, mm -hmm. engaging, yeah. right. uh, mm -hmm. rigorous to some degree, right? They're impassioned about the teacher to some degree. You know, I yep. mean, and I'm not excusing all that. I mean, middle school kids can be just downright lazy sometimes, but but I think. You know, we used to say all the time that, you know, there were certain teachers where they did do all the work and they did keep up with mm -hmm. it and they did seem engaged and they did seem, yeah. you know, so it's sort of a it's catch-22, really you know, mm -hmm. it's it's not yeah. just yeah. all about, and I don't mean you were saying this, but you can't, how are we going to hammer them if they don't? Cause right, no. I, the I'm the question is, why aren't they, you know, what, right, what's exactly. going on here? Why don't they care? Why don't they right. feel right. motivated and... And if the grading system is contributing to that, then we need to keep looking at yeah. that. Well, and that's but, what I wonder is if the grading system is, in, is preventing teachers from doing things the way they used to. Like, I don't... Yeah, which frustrates them a little bit, I think, but... Like... Well, I mean, if you think about the like grading system, so there could be a kid <coughs> on... I, and I think I'm thinking about this right. So there could be a kid on the missing work list with 15 assignments. Like, with ridiculous. what? Like, 15 assignments. 
but in their actual grades, it's not going to be reflected as right. failing as, or as, as one as a one, right? It, because they, they wouldn't have been it. they wouldn't have been graded on yeah, yeah some of the skills they could be it. graded in something yeah. else. They wouldn't have been graded yet. They, you know, when and then it only takes the last three the last three assignments that were inputted <clears throat> as the average. So those are put in. So then, <laughs> right. So no wonder they're it's not really complicated. doing the assignments. Well, yeah. right? I mean, and I've heard so from teachers. Really teachers. There's I mean, no the teachers, I would have the teachers can that. override. <laughs> right, right. They can override the system. They can I mean, override. They the can. System. Um, as a teacher, I did, and we had the same problem because it's not. It's the system that we're working in. It's power school, yeah. right? It, it's a uh, how you program <coughs> it. Student is, management is yeah. how you program it, right? And so. We've talked about it. I mean, we've talked yeah. about it multiple times. And I think most teachers know they can't override yeah. it. Sometimes they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, do but again, this is part of it is the mindset that's that. It's that mindset from traditional grading to right. performance-based grading, right? And that's I think it. that's the part that, you know, they're figuring some pieces of that out that aren't yeah. good the way they're figuring it out. But, but also, I mean, uh, I remember in school at times there was a lot of rote, rigorous work. Right. Oh, well, I don't know if it was rigorous, but it was certainly yeah. rote. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. That used to drive me absolutely nuts. Yeah, absolutely. Because I thought my mother would kill me if I didn't get it totally done. Totally agree. Yeah. It was all outside. But I could have aced some of those exams exactly. without even doing any of that work. And right. so can a lot of these kids. So That's what worries me. Part, mm -hmm. Right. So part of it's, I think they figure that out, that I know this. And <laughs> no, I've, I, can, I can solve a quadratic equation, and I'm not going to do those 10. Mm -hmm. Because I can solve them, and when you give right. me the quiz or the final, I'll show, I'll show you that I can okay. solve them. And that's part of that new mindset, right? right? Where it was always about in the old days the work. You know, right. you had to do the work, but it's kind of like it was tied in with your participation that? and your behavior, and it was subjective. Oh, yeah. Those great. So if you were a nice, compliant yeah. kid, and you were, you know, handing in all the work, because I remember that used mm -hmm. to happen a lot. You know, you give twenty percent for homework, twenty percent right. for yeah. effort. Twenty. Right. You used to have kids that weren't producing or performing at the yeah. end that were getting C's and D's under that old system, mm -hmm. or B's even, because they... Because they had a lot of C's. <laughs> because they were compliant, you know, right. or they knew how to, to do the work, or whatever. Yeah. It's, but, it's but complicated. The, but the question there is, in that case, why is that student being given these that's assignments? That's a good point. And right. they are, why aren't they point. being challenged that's above a, where they are? That's an excellent point. And, and asked to hand in work and right. do work at the level that they're actually working. Working at exactly. yes. and that comes back to for, for me what was the big differentiation differentiated right. instruction. instruction and that was exactly. that really I think was the big takeaway yeah. of, of ours was and the middle school team has how changed. do we uh, help them uh, the, 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 it's dynamic this year we have a new year, middle right? school team it's we do basically we do almost a new yeah. middle school team right? but differentiating instruction is a challenge yeah, yeah. it's a huge it, challenge. it is um, extremely difficult yeah. even very seasoned excellent teachers struggle yeah. with differentiating yeah. instruction to meet the needs of all the different levels in the classroom. Yeah. I mean, there's just not enough time in the there's day. Not, right. Um, so it's, it's a, and teachers are shifting their mindsets around grading. I mean. They are. Yeah. They are. And they're, they're not there yet. Yeah, oh, yeah. And that's where I'm like. Yeah. Trying to tease out. Because I've heard it from teachers and that they yeah, don't They, they don't like know how, they haven't they been trained to teach this way. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And they also don't feel like they have the say to like, from what I've heard is that they don't feel like they have the say to be like this isn't acceptable because everybody's on their own trajectory mm. through I think what Angie's trying to do um, is really clearly define the learning expectations the targets what does a three look like you know forming some common assessments across mm -hmm. the SU with scoring guides because that's really helpful I mean mm -hmm. it specifically tells you what the work, what the criteria mm -hmm. um, is for particular assignments, and, and you have that, and it guides you. Um, but that work isn't done yet; it's just mm -hmm. not. So teachers are doing the best they can with what they know and the resources that they have. But we know it's work we need to do. Yeah. So is there like a plan for the? I'm thinking in the middle school particularly, but it's also happening, I think, in three five as well. Is there a plan for the teachers to come <coughs> together and kind of? Because it's a new group, it like hash out what their expectations are as a unit. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, 
I think we, we worked really hard, um, Brittany worked really hard around the behavioral components because um, that's still rising to the top. Mm -hmm. of right. And it's preventing a lot of it things. Is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's probably um, preventing differentiated <coughs> instructions. Yeah. That's yeah. what I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They may know yeah. how to yeah. do it, but don't have the time. Yeah. Right. Or they're just exhausted. They, they're also, Plastic. they're shifting back to, just from what I can gather from, you know, before I was even here, is, you know, they, they used to kind of do their own behavior stuff in their classroom yeah. and it was managed by them or whatever. And then it's their, their feeling is that it was taken away from them at some point mm -hmm. where they were not right. allowed to do that anymore. To do so what? To, to kind of manage their classrooms just on their own, to, to just yeah. come up with their systems and, and, and use it. Use right. it. Mm -hmm. So we're shifting back to that. Right. Um, so that teachers feel more empowered, but it, but it's a it's a hard shift going back now, right? Um, because they always they fall back to the coming to my office and saying they need support with this, which I 100% support them. Versus, no, you can make that decision. You you know, right. and you need to because you know it it sends a very different message to the students yeah. if the yeah. teacher is the authority and the one mm -hmm. making those decisions. So, um, but but we're definitely getting there. There was a lot of improvements yeah. last year in that area, and I think this year with the new system the way um, the way it's designed it'll help more mm -hmm. yeah. just really gives them more and when you power. looked at that behavior data I mean, there was some pretty big, big discrepancies in terms of yeah. a teacher who had referred no one all year and, right. and another teacher who had referred Almost, you know, oh, who knows? Yeah. So 50, this is, this system is going more. So that's a uh, huge, right? Yeah. It's huge. Pod based. It's going more pod based. So that they have a, it, it, you know, the data that they're going to be collecting is going to be used by them every single day. Which is great. Um, versus, you know, we're collecting. So so they'll get more time to talk about like the, what is the data they want to collect that's going to be valuable for them to use in their classroom versus our other system was very. Um, it, it was hard for everybody to be consistent. Um, and they weren't getting it too late. Right. So it's You know, here, here's, the, here's the catch 22, right? We just said that some of these behavior issues might be preventing the differentiation, right? Mm -hmm. Flip that, right? Is the lack of differentiation creating some it's of those behavior issues, right. you see? Yeah. So yeah, you, I mean, you can sort of come at that glass half full, glass half empty mm -hmm. sort of thing. And it's probably a little it's both to some yeah. degree. Mm -hmm. But again, without being really critical, I think that We've got to get the learning to be a little bit more engaging, a little more relevant, a little more project-based. It's mm -hmm. kids don't do well anymore with just a problem on the board. That you know right. they're just too connected to their world and to their to their technologies. And again, well, they need to lead the learning. They they need to lead some of it. The kids mm -hmm. themselves and the yeah. kids yeah. need some investment in their own learning. That's exactly right. right. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're focusing. That's right. Yeah, that is where you focus, yeah. which, is, which is great. Yeah. It'll be a little easier this year to focus there. Yeah, we've got school, some new new staff. A little bit of a new team. They We've built in, um, I mean, part of the missing work problem from the kids' point of view was, yeah, we're assigned a study hall, but it's managed by a teacher that doesn't know how to do this work. Right. They can't help us. So we've managed to build in some flex time so that the teachers have access to the kids during that time and they've they've met this summer and developed a system um, to, to um, kids sign up it's on them where they need to be to get help so we're going to see how that works we'll see almost like office hours I think that's good yes. I think to give yes. them more responsibility is. Well, yes. teachers can also do some callbacks they too, can like for, for yeah. students that they really need to see yeah. like you have to come see me today well, right yeah. does some of that get to the um, Called the homeroom group or the um, advisors. Yeah. Yes. Does that get to the advisors mm -hmm. so that the advisors? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's how could, it goes. I here. mean, could there be something? I'm just thinking. Cause I, I, I it, like when I look at my own college and graduate school experiences, like that ability to go to a teacher mm -hmm. when you don't understand something or have a question, yeah. like that is critical. everything. Yeah. That's like the most critical thing that yeah. you mm -hmm. need. It, could we say once? in the school year, every kid has to approach a teacher about an actual, you know, okay. issue that they're yeah. having. It can be whenever they want, it can be whatever mm. question they want to ask, but one time in the year you have to proactively go and talk to a teacher about yeah. your work or something just, something just like that. Just, just for the practice. Give them the experience, yeah. lots of positive yep. feedback for doing it. Yep. Make it a practice throughout the middle school. Yep. Um, I don't know, it's just a thought. You've yeah. also done a tremendous amount of work on the schedules too. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. I mean, I just we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's that's built into to what they've designed. Great. The kids that's great. Yeah. Are I mean, as Brittany said, there are teachers that will um, say a kid needs to come see them. Yep. 
because they don't want to let them, you know, flounder, flounder. For, forever. But yeah. but it is on the kids to to go and to go do that. Yeah. And I think it's also yeah. really important for the teachers and, and students to identify the other way too, is I'm not being challenged. Right. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. in right. That, yeah. And the teacher recognizing you're not being challenged. Yeah. Right. We need to do something about this yep. and going on the other end as well. Yep. Um, because we do point. tend to get waylaid by more of the other end. Yeah, point. absolutely. And it seems like advisory is also a good place for that conversation to happen. Mm -hmm because you're supposed to have a better bond with right. that adult. And we look at their, we go into power school and yeah. with them once a week and look at where they're at, what's missing. Oh, okay. And say, you know, as an advisor, I would say, uh, you've got work missing here, you've got this score, you know, yeah, we look at their scores, yeah. yeah. Do you need help? What do you, you know? No, I'm gonna go see the teacher, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. So it sounds Those like there's advisors. not much that we can do on that front except to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Well, I think it could, it'll be really interesting well, to so see how the schedule works this, this year. year. Yeah, yeah. Schedule like schedule everything. Right. There's so, so many variables. It feels like a lot of those changes are already in the works yeah. with the recognition that that was an issue. Yeah. And now mm -hmm. we're gonna just keep it on the radar list. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah. we don't have. Yeah. <laughs> and the um, I know that we may not have as much time tonight for the end of the year data discussion <clears throat> as we really need. But there's yeah. a, a there's a lot there I think to discuss and to kind of have that so that the the instructors yeah. are looking at that and maybe setting some goals for improvement mm -hmm. and I you know that I think that all goes to what yeah. we're talking about here yeah um, yeah and the staff hasn't looked at that data yet they haven't okay no so. it came at the end of the year I compiled it yeah. over the summer so they haven't seen it, seen it yet. yet yeah, yeah maybe we should um, get into that I think so, so on topic to take this stuff, take this yeah. stuff down um, yeah um, I guess on topic one um, moving forward I think in budgeting time we need to look at what we might want to do yeah mm -hmm. there's a pretty um, clear well I think there's some clear there. direction <laughs> there's yeah. clear direction um, from what the community wants yeah what the school community wants um, we just need to figure out if it's doable yeah. if it's doable yeah right um, well, topic I think, two I, mean, I even, think we made a yeah. lot of changes and we're waiting for mm -hmm. right to potentially see results and so that's something that we're going to keep track of mm -hmm. and they're all <coughs> consistent with these Items, so topic yeah. three, I think, still needs some work. I think, yeah, I think the community wants more. They do, but that might be it, might have budgetary implications as well. <coughs> it might have budgetary implications, and it also has resource mm -hmm. like people mm -hmm. resource implications. Struggle. And sure. it's including a struggle. the after school enrichment. Piece. I mean, yeah. I, I put out every I mean pretty frequently mm -hmm. when we're doing electives that we would love any volunteers and we really don't yeah I mean, don't Sarah know. did one but <laughs> it, we don't it get a hard, lot it was hard work and yeah. it was Better time work. consuming it is. and yeah. um, I love doing it and I but I can also understand why we don't People, get yeah you know, it's, it's, exactly. that came in, that was it's a job yeah mm -hmm. it's but a real thing yeah. yeah and and it, I will say it's hard with volunteers because things come up right. and then when they can't make it, it you're scrambling to figure right. out exactly how to cover that yeah right so that's also a challenge but there's also some history that I think is interesting around you know the heart program and you know Jeff wanted it to be equitable and so he had these bus he had these late yeah. buses and mm -hmm. nobody used them right mm. and I know sometimes with some of the after-school programs there have been things and then parents didn't actually use them and yeah so I think right. there's a little bit there's a little bit of yeah you know ask that maybe we need to really focus <coughs> Mm -hmm. The co-curricular stuff and do less, smaller, but things, do it better yeah. and right. Really, that's what I'm thinking. You know, too. that's just kind of really pare it down, but do it better yep. and make do it, it right. really worthwhile for the kids who do it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, one thing that comes to my, in the looking forward heading, it seems that there's a lot in topic two that overlaps. Bec yeah, a lot in topic two, in, and specifically the middle school conversation that overlaps with portrait of a graduate mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would think that there would continue to be that's some. That's true. Um, yeah, that yes, sort of definitely. response yeah, coming out right. there. It that, is. That's yeah. clearly you're, you're right. Yeah. And I think the other thing, I guess it's a word. I think the scheduling sometimes, you know, to, because again to start adding resources uh, after school. Because I remember that one that Jeff yeah. did. That was pretty costly, and, and yeah. you yeah. probably couldn't have sustained that two years in a row. Yeah. I think it was like sixty grand to get all that transportation, hopping, and the whole nine yards. But um, yeah, the the other thing we're doing in middle school, which 
slowly figuring it out. Um, I reached out to Beth White from Big Picture Learning, who yeah. um, works with yeah, she's gonna be Tiffany, great. and she's gonna come. Uh, we, were, we were able to manage not enough time, but once a month a meeting with the uh, integrated team, right. um, and Beth is gonna come and be part of that, and she is all about um, expeditionary learning yeah, and taking right. kids out of the school building, and it's not, um, four walls anymore yeah. um yeah. so cool. she'll be a good resource yeah. She'll she, get them going. yeah she's she's wonderful um they haven't met her yet but um she's got the dates in her calendar and she'll be a great resource great yeah and it's a good time to do that because that team yeah. is like you said it's new yeah it's new right. yep she'd she'd like to take them on a little journey she mm -hmm. likes to take she take likes to out. visit um yeah so we're trying to figure that out but yeah that's, that's good. good yeah she calls it leaving to learn. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. Yeah. You want me to project this um, data, Nikki? You mean the data you uh, Yeah, that yeah. I sent? Yeah. 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 It's on your report pretty much because are we done with yeah, that? Yeah, it is. I, oh, yeah, I well, had, um, we do your report. Yeah, and I don't have Christine I don't have much because we did a lot of the SRO and the uh, the office transition. We talked a little yeah. bit about that. That's still going on both in terms of the e-finance piece and my administrative assistance. So just try to be patient as we pull minutes and agendas and stuff together. We'll we'll do the best we can. Um, so much of this, Diane did just second nature and. I, I never noticed it, you, you know, and, and she's, she's That's what I was thinking to, about on the drive down. <laughs> she's now trying to I was like, oh. train this very young woman to do the same thing, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been kind of an interesting, uh, interesting part. Hiring in special ed, there's going to be a letter that goes out from Karen's office uh, just in the last couple of weeks. It's just unbelievable, you know, probably seven or eight kids that have registered that all have pretty severe IEP needs. And, some of them are one-on-one one needs. In. What's that? Yeah, but just not necessarily for here. Right. Not no, all but here. Still, yeah, yeah, the issue. Would. What's that? It's just crazy that kids are coming in this late. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the migration is. I don't know where all those needs come from, but they are here. And so consequently, it's a staffing concern. And Karen's going to get the word out that, you know, we're not going to be completely staffed when, yeah. when the year begins. So we're going to have to be creative with who provides one-on-one -on -one services, the behavior interventionists, and uh, she's got a plan, but it's, you know, it, it, she's gonna have to work with the principals to make sure everything's covered, and there may be not so much regular ed classroom parents, but there are a few special ed, quote-unquote, classroom parents that may all of a sudden find themselves one-on-ones when the year begins, because that's the critical need, because those kids, if they don't have what they need, and that's built into their IEP, it can, it can make for a very messy situation. And then the only other thing that I shared with you, which was kind of exciting, I had no idea that at my age I could get anything like that <laughs> equity fellowship, but mm -hmm. I'll keep you posted on that. Yeah, well, that's it was, exciting. It was, it was pretty really wild. Exciting. I said, Congratulations. why would they want an old white guy from Vermont, you know? But, uh, <laughs> but you know, because equity fellowship sort of, and when you look at who's in that cohort, I'm, I'm going to be the odd man out probably, but it'll be fun. It's going to connect all of us with some of the best and brightest minds. In, in the country, so it's we'll cool. we'll keep you posted, and I think it could help with some of this work, right? Like, yeah. what a middle school's doing, what a high school's doing, mm -hmm. you know. And so, we'll just keep, I'll just keep you posted. That's it for me. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. So we did some of this. We did the. Uh, yes. Portrait of graduate, and I'm gonna skip that and just go to the last slide. I, I kept it short because I knew we had other stuff to do, but. Um, the HEA representatives wanted me to give you this message. I don't know the details, and I didn't have a chance to watch what you sent, Scott, yet, but, um, but I will. They just, um, the negotiations for statewide insurance are not going well. as well as they'd hoped. <laughs> so that has implications on, for people, and especially um, support staff, if the cost goes up significantly, that will have a great impact on right. people's livelihood. So yeah. I don't know what your role in that is. I don't know what you do about it. They just wanted me to, they were asked to share it out to the school board, so. Mm -hmm. Well, Scott will play a role on behalf of the Heartland Board, but uh, what will happen is the, uh, there, there is a timeline for this, and it's a mandatory by law timeline. 
and what they're in right now is mediation, mm -hmm. some level of fact finding. But by December, it goes to binding arbitration, and, and, and there's not going to be any if, ands, or buts, it's binding arbitration. So we should know by January 1st at the latest what yeah. our all of us, teachers, parents, yeah. administra yeah, yep. administra what, what and our does it go into health effect? package. And it goes into effect, uh, that's a good question, because these health packages tend to run January yeah. Yeah, to that's December. What I know, but if it's yeah. December. So then maybe yeah. like we did the last time, some crossover there between school year and, and calendar year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it'll probably go into effect January of 20, what would that One. be? 2021. 20, 20, yeah. But it's going to have implications, because again, if the costs go up, then Right. Yeah. We're going to be at the table having to either try to compensate for that or, mm -hmm. or not. The other thing too is if the costs go down, it, it, you know, it, it both with teachers and staff, it'll be a way to to look for some additional monies on our, you know, that. So we'll see. But I know they're really it's nervous not about it. Going down at this point. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, think it's, yeah. I think it could go. Up. Yeah. We'll keep you posted. Yeah, and then I just listed some dates for you. Um, I think I gave two before, but. Now, are those dates, Christine, those are... Um, Doesn't that overlap with something? No, I don't... No. Nope. Uh, these are um, the community oh, dinner dates. Oh, so that's, you threw out the 19th. The 25th, 25th. is, is okay. for... Uh, yep, for, got it. For the, but now, when, when you say dinner dates, are those... Community dinners, Craig is... Dinner. Craig is Craig going to yeah. Craig's going to do it? Okay. Well, well, yeah. Farm to school. yeah, the hope and would so be that the students... So they're, we kind of tentatively assigned, worked with Kelly and Craig on assigning which pod yeah. is kind of responsible and what they're learning about with farm to school so that that that's pod perfect. can that's have great. kids there and highlight yeah, whatever's perfect. in farm to school and then we'll right. we'll also pair um, a reading night a math night and a steam night with those other those bottom three dates great I'm so, so excited. This was work that we did over the Farm to School Institute. Yeah. I'm yeah. so excited about sorry. all of this. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah, it's really so very exciting. exciting. Yeah. Um, just, just so you have those dates. And then I can open up the data for you. Will the reading one have a year of the book connection? or? Uh, we haven't thought that far yeah. into it. Oh, but it's sure actually. It could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some, yeah. The most I got is the steam is going to be, I think, the April one. Great. Right. That's as far yeah. as I've gotten. And then our, we're going to have our, um, so our PBIS committee used to, well, we have two different ones. One kind of works on overall PBS planning and one works on just planning like what we, what we used to have whole school celebrations. And we're not really doing those. We're going to have more community type events. Um, and so they're going to work on planning those reading, math, and STEAM nights, um, what that's going to look like. And, and also trying to integrate with like harvest of the month and mm -hmm. what they're learning. So if they're learning yeah. about cucumbers, yeah, what can we? We'll have some cucumbers, <laughs> right? But what else can we do? Even yeah. though it's involved reading and, mm -hmm. and steam and right, right, or right. whatever, maybe. Yeah. Story writing stories about cucumbers yeah. or with cucumbers. <laughs> I guess I can't make the screen bigger. Pretty good. Oh, it's fine. okay. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So um, I, I uh, with the help of. Jenny Duranzo did a little bit of um, the track my progress um, data that's in here for us. Um, we looked at some different things. We looked at attendance between um, students and staff. And we do have a little bit of a truancy problem with um, a s small population of students. Um, and my hope is that I was talking to Tiffany today about her. She, we were talking about the SRO, and she said he, he uh, is on her truancy team. And I said, Oh, you have a truancy team? We don't have a truancy team. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's something to think about. I mean, mm -hmm. the truancy team is Linda and myself, and she sends the letters that we right. have to send to parents when they're, you know, at five, 10, 15, 20 days wow. absent. Yeah. Um, and we try not to be punitive about it. Typically, there are some reasons why kids aren't getting to school. And it's certainly not usually their fault. Um, so we try to work with parents. And I'll meet with them and just say, what can we do to help you? What can we do to help get your student here? It's really important. I mean, we've had a little bit of success with that. But we still have kids that are pretty chronically um, tardy and absent from school, which has an impact. So do you have any um, wonderful ideas? Please what share is them. It's normal, David. Say that again. What's normal? What's normal for student absences? 
I mean, I kind of feel like I would say the six to ten is probably yeah, normal. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody gets the flu and they're out. Yeah, they're out for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But so, that's kind of what my gut was saying is like, oh, you know, five to eight days. Of yeah, thing. yeah. So most of our, I mean, most of our students are in the, are in the normal range. They um, are. It's yeah. that. 11 to 15 and up that right. the focus and there, needs that's, to be. That's um, 43 kids yeah. have had 11 to right. that's 15 a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they get smaller, um, but it's still something that we need to keep track mm -hmm. of and yeah. work on. Um, that's, that's a bigger point. Staff, um, which we've talked, which we're trying to address um, at the SU level because it's across. I think schools. they need to see Is that it? graph. It's, so it's across oh, they will, the schools. They will see it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. A, pro it's a problem. Throughout. When we've sent out that data too. Yeah. 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 Our SU. And we tried to go at it in a positive fashion this year, keeping track of classrooms and advisors who had the best attendance. We had lunch with them. Um, yeah. And. It, I don't know. That it well, that was for students, not for staff. Students. I don't think. It, yeah, I don't think it made a difference. Yeah. So That's we have staff that are um, That's huge. out a lot. Yeah. It has an impact on education. It has a huge impact. Yeah. yeah. And that's a that's a percentage of classroom we're, we're time that is significant that's significant that you're that Correct. the kids are just aren't getting instruction that's, that's going to come up in one. negotiations too I was yeah. say, so these are paid days off though like people are not taking they're calling in sick yeah calling in sick calling but in are sick. using or days. professional days <laughs> I mean, some of them are professional some could be days, professional days um, but a lot of it is it's a lot of it's sick. sick days some of it's sick okay. um some of it i mean but it's all allowable under the contract yeah the president, I guess. Mm -hmm. it is so yeah, if you really have that, if you have, you know, 50 sick days yeah. built up. Yeah. 50 sick days if you want So to. we, I brought it to the admin team. We're, we're all struggling. Yeah. And we have a little bit of a <clears throat> negotiations plan to yep. talk about it. Yeah. And basically, it's, I mean, it's a pretty liberal policy contract. It's not unusual. I mean, it's liberal around the state teachers. Yeah. yeah. Negotiated sometimes probably a bit in trade for money years and years ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they've got more sick days than you'll see in any other industry. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times industries say you have to be out one day, you know, right, before you can start. Get earned, earned you know, time. Yeah. Yeah. You almost like earned. Mm -hmm. but there were there are places where you used to you used to get a buyout for them at the right. end when you retired or right. yeah. you yeah. could get paid a certain percentage for your days, which which actually I think probably helped people not use them. Right, because they wanted to save them at the end. But yeah. we don't have that in our country. And I know that there are other businesses that are getting rid of sick days. Right. Or or doing use it or lose it at the end of the fiscal year. Just calling them leave days, you mean or, and, or just no, nothing? they're just you, they're not accruing sick days and by no. not giving people a number of you have thirty People are inclined to be like, I have to use up my 30. Or yeah. just say, <coughs> when you're if sick, you're sick, take a stay day home. Off. And, mm. yeah. and um, yeah, right. we have it actually has shown. It doesn't disappear. Right. So, I mean, we earn our time off. So, if I work, start right. work, I have to, you know, I can't immediately right. take a vacation. Right. Um, but then we have a period of time where we can't accrue. Once we hit a cap for our time off, you can't get any more. You can't yeah. get any more. Yeah. Right. You're like, you're, you're right. out of luck. And then you have to use at least half of that every year, or else it'll you lose. like you lose. Yeah. Right. And so, the only thing that accrues is the same time. Personal days don't carry over. No. Bereavement days don't carry over. But yeah, sick time does. Point, so. Which is great if somebody is truly sick. sick. Yep. Like that is, yep. yeah, a real gift. Yeah. But <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, the thing that I, that just sort of occurs to me is how how many of those are. Are sort of mental health days because people are feeling burned out. Right. Some of them are. And is that something we can? Is that something that can be addressed? And either through our wellness policy or our. Uh, is there some something else we can offer? You know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, honestly, if a person is in that state and they need a mental health day, yeah, I want them. That, to sure. Right. Yeah. There, there, there should be a certain yeah. number of those that you right. just get anyway. Absolutely. Right. But if you're having 20 of those. Is there something we can do to help? Right? Is that something we want to talk about? Is that something yeah. we can do to help? I don't. That's the only thing that occurs to me. Yeah, and and you know, full disclosure, the climate was not great at right, right the second half of the year, and so yeah. part of that is 
a direct result just, of justified. Of justified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have this data in there or not, but the the jobs filled is low. So like if you had, uh, let's say you had 30 jobs posted in one month, right, of a variety of different subs. teachers, you may we may only fill 40% of those jobs with substitutes. So that means that you're pulling regular ed paraprofessionals from the to classrooms out, to fill right. those jobs, or you're right. piecing together, okay, we have one sub for four classrooms, how are we gonna you know, right. Right. use prep times for different people and put people into those positions? That, so right. That's, that's a, a really important point. It's and a scramble. It's really affecting instructional time. It's a so scramble. It has mornings. to be a priority. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've heard you guys doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds awful. And are we paying less than other schools? We just we just, we just, just increased the rate yeah. um, this for next year, so that might help. And but there's just a lack of there's a lack of employees yeah. in the state. I mean, we're all scrambling. But we are going to share sub pool across the SU now, so which I don't know if it's going to help yeah. or not, but it can't hurt. It can't hurt. <laughs> and we also got rid of the pay differential for. Um, yeah. Certified, certified teachers certified, versus yeah. non-certified teachers, mm -hmm. so everybody's a hundred dollars. Oh, good. Okay. So that may You're, that may help pull some yeah. people in. Yeah. Um, so we should have Linda that. send out an advertisement about that too. Yeah. Along with that punch that these are, um, what were they called? Mental, mental health, mental health, 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 health. Is that for the most part, or at what level is that communicated with? you guys as leaders um, some you, some people will will just say I just need a day I mean yeah. they will um, but most of the time they just call in sick so you don't so, really have a good idea about what, what no I mean I could that, guess yeah. um, and, and you know some of it is some of our teachers have young kids and when their kids are sick right. they stay home it's, yeah mm -hmm. and sure. they've been very you mm -hmm. know there are a couple that have said I can't take turns with my husband because he doesn't get paid if he's out sick, and I do. And right. it's, we don't have the money to do that. Yeah. So I mean, they're they're honest about that, yeah. um, which is a reality. Totally. Yeah. So it's, it's it's challenging, but we definitely know it's an issue, and we need to figure out how to make it better. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the rest of the this is um, going into academic data. This is the track my progress data um, by uh, that Jenny did up by cohort, and she ran the numbers um, by percentile score and then by um, scaled scores. And scaled scores, I put the definitions in there for uh, folks to look at if need be. But when you look at um, The percentile score, the data doesn't look that great. Red is de declining and yeah. the green is in increasing. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the scaled scores, it looks better um, across the board. So and everybody's improving. Yeah. But yep. we're improving fewer kids to the standard. Compared to, the standard. to other schools in the state, right? That's a statewide percentile or na nationwide? This oh, no, nationwide. No. It's, it's, okay. it's mm -hmm. nation, track yeah. my progress. Got it. Yeah, okay. It's not, yeah. Um, and we use that, when we get to the end, I can show you, I, I did a comparison of um, the track my progress, and they're, they're coded by color, really. And yeah. That's how teachers typically look at them. If you're in the red, you're really struggling. Yeah yellow, blue, and green. And um, when I compared the SBAC and the Track My Progress scores, the blue, let me get this mixed up in my head. Um, I compared um, proficiency rates with SBAC and Track My Progress, and we typically don't look at kids in the blue for extra supports because they're meeting yeah, the benchmark. Meeting. Yeah. But they're, it doesn't correlate with SBAC. It's really the kids that are in green are really scoring proficient on the SBAC. Mm -hmm. um, so something for our, our our targeted teams to think about and look at when we're planning for interventions. Um, so this is the overall SBAC data. 
from 18, uh, FY 18 to 19 in um, reading and math. Math we declined like pretty lot. significantly. Yeah. And you can break that. I mean, you can look. Do you have that broken down by grade? Um, yeah. Yeah. This is SBAC um, ELA by cohort over time. So color is, and this is how my mind works. If this is not a good format for you, just let me know. I can format it differently. But it's just the, the kids over time, how they're doing in ELA by grade level. So you can see there, you know, it, it's, it's up and down. So the current fifth grade went up, current sixth grade went, you know, went up one year and then down. Um, this is their first year of middle school. So each cluster is a mm -hmm. cohort then? Yes, mm -hmm. each cluster is a cohort. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what were you saying, Nikki? Were you, saying, were you noticing well, something? The, the seventh grade really dropped. But last year was their first year of middle school. Of middle school. But that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you look at that pattern mm -hmm. across from, now you're in, if you go to the seventh, Current eighth, the current eighth grade, they dropped eight. when they hit sixth grade too. Exactly. Yeah, that's what they I was all noticing. they all seem to. That seems to be a pattern. Yeah. Yep. yep. And so did the ninth and, grade. And it kind of holds. Yeah. And look mm -hmm. at the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They dropped and stayed down. And stayed, stayed down. down. The current ninth grade. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they they're did. being compared to other middle school students. Across Th this is this is just no. Heartland. This is just Heartland data. So but, they, but they are, yes. But they're being, but, who, but to get to come up with the percentiles, oh, that's the percent that's that percent was proficient, proficient above, or yeah. above. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. got it. That's percent proficient or above. Or above. And then there. Oh and wait, that was reading though. That yeah, was that was yeah. reading. That yeah. was yeah. ELA. This is but math. There's yes. a similar pattern in math. There mm -hmm. is yeah. a similar pattern in math. Yep. So although I, math went down every year. Yep. versus just hitting sixth grade and going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they did that too, but. I think yeah. it would be also, it would be interesting to keep these plotted by cohort, but look at the year. So they code all of the sixth grade year the same. Say Probably. that again. I'm going to you. No, I can do it. In other words, how did the sixth grade do over the yeah, last four years? Yeah, so instead years? of looking at oh, like 15, 16, right. 17, 18, right. like sixth grade, third grade, this is what they look like. Mm -hmm. and like third grade is a one color. Fourth All the third grade, grade yeah. yeah. Um, seems to. Which, right. right, which targets more. Like just a different color scheme, but the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah. I, yeah. So not, not looking great. Um, and you break it down, I broke it down by um, non-free and reduced and free and reduced. And yeah. we're, we're certainly not closing the gap. We've got, no, we've got, a, we've got yeah. a huge gap. Yeah, we've got a big gap. It's worse than, yeah. it seems to get worse the it older they get. It seems to get worse, yeah. The older they get, the, wor the bigger the gap gets. And, and you know, there, there are so many um, <coughs> potential reasons for that. Right. I mean, when kids get to middle school, they start to refuse help. They don't even want to. They don't want to look different. Um, they disengage. I mean, we have some kids that uh, we had a kid finish the test in uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes. Yeah. Seven minutes. Done and submit. And we can't. I mean, we're not supposed to step in. We're not yeah. supposed to help. We're not supposed to, um, you know, guide them in any way when they're taking that test. So the gap has gotten worse from 17, 18, and 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your percentage of Free and reduced is increasing too. We right? have a higher percentage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's also affecting mm -hmm. that average over time, right? Because you've got more kids scoring in that lower right. range. Right, that's a good point. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, so when you get the average of everybody, which were the two it's slides just above, it's right. coming you can down. see why it's coming down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I broke it down. Let's see, that's math. Um, free and reduced. Versus same non thing. free and reduced, same thing. Did you do special ed? I did. Um, this that is special ed. Yeah. That is. That's very concerning. It's that very there concerning. Are no, there yeah. are no. Nobody met the mark. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So right. what does that tell you, right? And your special ed numbers are increasing. Right. So that's right. a big cohort. So that's too, also or a bigger. Cohort. Right. That's also affecting. That. Yeah. But that. It's it's dra it's pretty significant. Yeah, I mean that's just we're not yeah. we're not <coughs> delivering <coughs> education right. to and, and it's, a lot of kids. It's consistent. Yeah. I mean it's not it's not changing either as they as they yeah. oh, over time. Right. 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 Um, so that's so also that like, says I don't know without being too critical and yes it's a reason too. It's not saying much about our you know our support right. system or special ed system that. <coughs> Although it's this is math, math, so it's better so in math. That's better in math. Yeah. But we've put a lot of effort into math. Yeah. <laughs> we really have. Yeah. Um, so. so that I mean, that shows that there are interventions yeah. can work with mm -hmm. perhaps with the, with that population, yeah. but. Um, Feels so close to equal. It's still yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's not. not. God no. Right. Well, in the middle school too, when you think about the special education department, you've had turnover. Turnover like four right. years of. Different yeah. turnover. Sorry, yeah. yeah, I started that, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> that happened. Yeah, was hard. she came back. I did come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we did. We have um, filled the special ed um, teacher roles. Yeah. So we're starting off the year. We had not last year. Um, mm -hmm. The teacher, the special ed teachers have enormous caseloads, like 20, 25, 26, 27 kids on bigger a than like load. a classroom. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, um, They've come down a little bit because we have an additional person, but they're still high. I mean, they still have pretty large caseloads, mm -hmm. which impacts. Um, and, and then this yeah. is fascinating. By gender. Yeah. This is fascinating. Female and male um, in ELA. We have a big gender gap. Yep. We have a big gender gap. Other than those boys in the current seventh grade, yep, <laughs> they held it down. But <laughs> I know, and I know exactly who, who that is. Yeah, there's, yeah, some, yeah. there's some math whizzes in that class. Yeah, in the, among yeah. those boys, and that's yep. you know, and ELA too. Some big readers in that class. And, but other than that, we have a big gender gap. Mm -hmm. So that's the current seventh grade. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, this right. is the current seventh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the boys the boys right here. The it's like. Mm -hmm. You know that group. It's like yeah. four boys, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, we'll see. I mean, uh, the new math teacher in middle school is, um, as you know, has been highly trained in Eureka. Um, mm -hmm. she's, and she'll, she'll um, so she brings a wealth of experience that might, might, might make some improvements in this area. As she says, I have a lot of pressure. I have a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. <laughs> uh, that's the math. Yeah. This is that's the math seven, by gender. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, seven, seven. yeah. The current uh, seven. Yep. So th the gap is less striking mm -hmm. it, when it comes to math, but it's it's still there, which is. Yep. It is. And in some places around the state and the country. For math, it's in the opposite direction, right. mm -hmm. which is very interesting. Right. So, yeah. the fact that we're seeing we just it, have a, it seems like a lack of engagement. Yeah, we do. Have more yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definite lack of engagement. Mm -hmm. um, so these are these are broken down. I won't go through all of these. It's just by grade level. How many students? How many boys? How many girls? Um, and then compared with the SU, so you can see how we've done over. Um, over time, I thought we did. Yeah. With 19, that's the latest one right there? Yes. This is current year. And it's, it's you know, it just breaks out the data from above. Um, so what I wanted to show you was, get to it. Comparison, which I might have showed you at the actually at the retreat. Yeah. Data. I think mm -hmm. we did. Yeah, it's um, just something for us to be be thinking about and talking about. And is our TMP um, scoring guide elevated? I mean, are we calling it proficient when it's really not? Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. I think we are actually. Mm -hmm. um, so that does in 
impact intervention for kids yeah. when, when we look at. Mm -hmm. Although we don't, we certainly, it's hard to provide the interventions at the lower, right. you know, the, yeah. the lower mm -hmm. levels. So yeah. um, and that may be what people were talking yeah. about in our group, Scott. Yeah, I'm I th sure. This thing of like kids in that sort of middle area yep. where maybe you're, you're squeaked it out, but you could really benefit from yeah. intervention. And yeah. yeah. And so. But the, the uh, I'm sure that's part of it. Yeah. So absolutely, because we don't we. We're working really hard to implement um, universal intervention because that's best practice. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to provide some time for planning that this year because that's one of the biggest um, asks of the staff. They just they don't have the time needed to do this work. Um, so we have it scheduled, and you know it was it was it's not really new. I mean, we had wind time in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is a similar similar model but it's really meeting the needs of all kids and using your resources and you have to change the way you think about things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you really do yep. um, and and we're working hard to put the most qualified person with the neediest kids mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't uh, that hasn't always happened yeah um, so we're working on that as well, well the other thing that I look at in this is that the majority of our students are not in the green right yeah, and so mm -hmm. it's it almost seems like it's less intervention and give the greens enrichment and the whole class needs right yeah. intervention or or different instructional strategies yeah like yeah exactly yeah. something yeah. yeah yeah that is part of our continuous improvement plan actually so yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the math. Yeah, that's like mm -hmm. almost dead on. Yep. And then what I wanted to show you, this, um, the annual snapshot data, have you heard about this? It's, it's been released. Way behind. It's yeah. been released. Oh, it's been released. <laughs> oh. Some of it, not all of it, um, but in, uh, you can go on the website, and I right. did put a link on here, I believe, for you uh, to go and explore some of the um, data is suppressed like I can see it more specific stuff but yeah. the public you know, can't see it all mm -hmm. um, but if you um, but it'll give us some really good data yeah it really it really will um, the only, th only piece that's been released is the academic proficiency piece and it's interesting it's not for the current year it's for 1718 I believe and if you look at it we were meeting our math um, in our math performance, and this means we're we're um, improving. So we got rated as excelling, and then in ELA, approaching and declining for that particular year, which which I thought was really interesting. So for when it comes in for next year, though, probably see, yeah. well, it'll be different. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it probably will be. Declining. Declining. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little? What are we doing for science um, competency evaluation? Say that again. Are we doing anything evaluating overall our science competencies across the school? And well, they are tested in fifth and eighth grade mm -hmm. um, with the science. I just don't hear anything about yeah, it. Yeah, I right. hear about all I hear about ELA is math. ELA and, ELA and math, and I'm just I'm getting more and more concerned as I see my own students progressing of yeah. the lack of science instruction happening because of such a focus. I feel like. Yeah, 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 no, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. right. You're absolutely right. You're and for me, right. I mean, I could teach science all day and check off every math and ELA yeah. I would yeah. have to instruct through that. I don't, and I so don't really think so it's really a concern for me um, yeah. as a community member that we're not, I don't Focus. feel like we're not focusing more on, on that. Um, I don't even think, I I have not seen those science scores come in yet. They're not in yet. Yeah, from, from the spring testing <coughs> cycle. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have last year's. They take a long time. They do, yeah. but I haven't seen this year's yet. But we'll report. But we'll them look at them. Out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just. I, it, I'm just disconcerning that we we. I also think the that focus on science is, I would say, about is like yeah. zero. Like it just I would say it at the elementary level. Yeah. You know, once you get to middle school and high school, you're taking your science courses. But I think at the elementary level, to fit the ELA and math in, 
with a kind of but that's what I'm saying is I think there not getting needs as to much be science. some more instruction and potential professional development around exactly. around um, NGSS because if exactly. NGSS is properly implemented then we're talking you can, about and you ELA can, and yeah and integrate math. it right integrate into ELA and math yeah, yeah. Um, so I think yeah. there's some work to be done around that so um, if you have time you might want to go in and, and just play around in here that more data will be released um, it's just not ready yet around these these categories, graduation rate, um, college and career readiness, and I don't even know how they, I don't know, yeah, I don't know how they're, they're collecting go, all that data, supposedly but. Supposedly they're gonna go grab yeah. the data yeah. by town. Well, they, they did talk about a survey uh, that that's going to be released this late fall, I think, a climate survey for students and staff. That's correct. Yes, so that, that will um, inform some but of that. But the post-high school data, they're, they're supposed to be gathering okay. that too. Which is, which is great. Um, I know one of the things with graduation rate, which is sort of telling, is, and this will come up through Portrait to graduate, Mike might have told us this too, but you know, the way they used to measure college, uh, they used to use a four-year cohort for college. Success. Then they moved to a six-year cohort. Now they're moving to an eight-year cohort. In other words, they, they determine some level of readiness and success that you can finish college within eight years. That's not. That's not with very. Just, with the BS, like or with a bachelor's degree. Yeah, I'm sorry, within but eight yes, years? with a bachelor's degree. Huh. We, well, that's sort of yeah. I mean, you know, it's yeah. taking kids longer and longer to finish, and the st the stat is like. Less than 50, I think it's 50 percent or yeah. less, don't finish. So we talk about who gets accepted to college. That's not really the telltale, right? It's really right. who finishes, finishes successfully. Not yeah. to mention who then gets gainfully employed. Well, yeah, it's also all about like what what are we what are we terming success? Because yeah. I think really focusing on a four-year college plan is not successful right. for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. In that you know there's plenty of folks in the trades that are not going through four-year school that are highly successful individuals right and I'm not so sure that's well embraced but you're right or right and I think that I don't I mean that's just really unfair because yeah I really can use a good mechanic yeah, right you ever try to find a plumber <laughs> right yeah. so this is so I was just playing it's it's kind of fascinating this is you can go in and compare this is the state of Vermont and how they're doing in those indicators and we can look at um, uh, you can look at um, Windsor Southeast as a yeah. whole so it's, it's some good information the SU data wasn't bad, I mean, you know, at least according to the snapshot, uh, which I, quite frankly, I'm still not completely. Well, this just came out, so we're just learning. Yeah, like within the last, too. right? There's a lot missing. I mean, see if I can uh, there's a lot that's yeah. not in there. <laughs> yeah. Yet, like, right, right. Seventy-five percent of it is nothing. Well, I can tr I can drill down by um, grade <coughs> level. I mean, yeah. when I go in, I can look at all sorts of different um, information. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so, yeah, um, so the staff will take a look at this, and um, we've, we've got some significant work to do. It's pretty clear. And then Brittany has some behavior data that she's going to <coughs> really pull up. Brittany, right? So you're going to roll yeah. some of this out at the beginning of the year? Yeah. No, this, wait, oh. no, this is different. No, this I is mean the... Oh, the academic. I'm going to take it to the. Uh, I'm going to take it first to the MTSS okay. t academic team to mm -hmm. look at and. Good idea. And then make a plan for, because it is disheartening and it, you, you have to be careful. I mean, it's it's yeah. the fact. These are the facts, and there are lots of variables. Right. But teachers take it so personally. Right. So you just have to present it in the right way. Yeah. But at the state level, like what is the state proficiency? I mean, I want all of our kids to be proficient, but... So this is the state. Well, that's the... I click on that. So there, that's the data that's up here. I think if I click on, let me see if I click on it, if it'll dig down. Oh, so you can look at it by grade, too. So if you click on a particular... Oh, no, you can't. Well, it, but you can also look at different student groups. Right. How they're doing. And so this is all based on SBAC data, or? Yeah, this is. 
this is SVAC data. But what does the state say that it's meeting? If 50% of your students are proficient, is that meeting? They had a very complicated mm -hmm. formula that I could not repeat back to you on how they come up with this. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. That is an important question, because I, I remember there was some discussion around you know that like every school in the state was not meeting right some some standard at some point it was like everybody yeah. was only 40 percent right proficient right. and so there was a question about is is this test a, right a test, test yeah. that is useful to us if we're you know right. I, so i would be very interested to know to know that how do we're, we compare to the state I, I think i heard i was at a workshop last week um, where we were looking at this and there were there were people from the agency there and they we were assigned an equity, I remember what it was called, David, equity um, coordinator to help us with our CIP process. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, well, how do you become an equity school? Like, what are the criteria? And, and they said every school in the state is an equity school because there's a huge gap. Everyone has that gap. Yeah, everyone has that gap. Yeah. So everybody has been assigned someone from the agency on the um, equity team. <coughs> to uh, as a resource so right you can you know contact the person if you'd like to work with that person uh, um, on your CIP or the continuous improvement cycle um, plan do study act cycle of improvement so I don't know if that answered your question but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely and I, and I wonder I mean I, I think there are obviously some schools that are you know where 80% of the kids are proficient and they tend to be schools with very low free and reduced lunch populations. And so, there, you know, I think there has been some conversation yeah. that mm -hmm. it tracks so closely that we have to be careful about how we draw use these results and draw conclusions. And um, at the same time, we need to, <laughs> we need to, if, if only 20% of our kids or 30% of our kids are proficient in math, we need to do something about that. And, yeah. um, Yeah. But more to come on this. I, I kind of yeah. like I like the tool. Um, <coughs> it kind of calculates some of that work that we Well, it would be good when it flushes out, yeah. too, and we get more data. Yeah. Um, I'll open this pretty for you. OK, so this is the behavior data that the board had requested, um, kind of comparing um, students on IEPs and students who are not on IEPs. Um, and I wanted to start off by, if you want to go to the yeah, first yeah. slide, yeah. Um, just kind of clarifying what they are and what they're used for. So they are just a way to collect data, like the behavior response forms are just a way for us to collect data um, to be able to come up with behavior trends. Um, you know, we look at it uh, just to see overall school wide, what does this look like by pod and then by individual students to see whether our interventions are working. Um, it's also used to track disciplinary action. So if, if some sort of consequence was used, what was it? And then is it being used a whole bunch, not working, and we need to change that up? Um, you know, all of those kinds of things are what we're thinking about. It also helps staff kind of break down the behavior a little bit and get them thinking, and we actually changed our, what we were doing and what was on the form so that they're thinking differently and making plans with students right there in the moment versus I'm just gonna report on this behavior and here you go. You know, really start thinking about why, why it is the students doing what they're doing and what are we gonna do to fix it. Um, and then it's communicating behaviors to us or the SEIs as needed so we can actually have something that says here's all of the information you need about this particular behavior so you can help process with the student um, because you don't always get to connect with the teacher in the moment. So um, some misconceptions about them are that they, they are not a consequence. So a teacher is not handing it to a student saying you've been written up bad. You know it's it's really they're just used to document behaviors. Um, and when a behavior is documented, you know, it can come with all sorts of different consequences. And this year, we're really, really focusing and training our staff on using logical consequences, making sure that whatever the consequence is makes sense with the behavior. I mean, there, of course, are things that, you know, policy says when this happens, you have to suspend or whatever. But mm -hmm. a majority of the time, we can be working with the students um, and providing a differentiated discipline <coughs> model. So. Just wanted to clarify that before we get into everything. So then I broke it up um, 
so we had last year we had 1587 total documented behaviors for the year um, and then I broke up the different behaviors so 17 715 of them were students on IEPs and I broke it down by majors versus minors um, and that's 45% of the total referrals were from 48 total students um, and of that 48 16 of them are on some level of um, behavior plan that is that I would consider more significant um, not just a very typical um, we're trying to be more consistent with this child no they're actual written plans that they're on um, students on 504s 27 total referrals for that and that's only 1.7 percent of our um, referrals were from six students and then 800, 855 were students not on IEPs or 504s um, which is 54% of the total referrals from 94 students. And 16 of those students are on some level of behavior plan that is significant, but they are not on IEPs. So they're managed um, by myself and the SEIs. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. So, um, I broke it down to just try to show you how many the students might have. So 148 students had at least one documented behavior last year. Um, of the 148, 32 of those students received some type of behavioral intervention. And I listed a few of what those might be. So 47% had no documented um, referrals. So this is just a breakdown of the 148 students. Mm -hmm. Roughly 80% did not have an IEP and 20% did. Yeah. Okay. And then over on that column, you're looking at this. This you're looking at. Oh, that's the total. No, no, no. That's just total. <coughs> yeah. Total. That's the total. Not the 148. Oh, right. This is yeah. Total. That's total yeah. population. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So the take, the take. I'm just, the takeaway is that it doesn't look like students on IEPs were significantly more likely to get behavioral write-ups. Is that an accurate takeaway from those numbers? I mean, it, in terms well, of their percentage in the population. They had more. Or am I reading that wrong? They had so more issues. They, they definitely. There, the. There are students on IEPs were getting written up, percentage-wise, more when you compared them to okay. the overall. All right. Um, okay. Now, when you break that down further, and you're thinking about how many students that actually is, right? You're looking at students that are getting written up often right. because we're collecting a lot of data okay. on them because they're on behavior because plans. Right. So that's where right. the data is kind of like, Skewed. you know, yeah. and, yeah. and we try to do it very, very consistently yep. because we want to have that data to show whether the plans we're putting in place right. are working okay. or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then on the other hand, you also have to think there are certain students, um, I can think of two offhand, but there are many others that if we wrote up their behaviors every time they had, like we do every other student in the building, they would blow it off the charts. They would have, right. So their data is collected differently. So yeah. like if we have BIs from HDRS, we don't document their behavior in this system at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Because it's being documented every 15 minutes by a BI. <laughs> right. You right. know, and it would yeah, skew yeah. the data. It would skew the data so You know, and there are other students yeah. who are on pretty significant plans, but again, if they were written up every single time for relatively, so you take the student, you say, okay, I'm going to write them up for this beha these behaviors because they are significant and they're happening all the time and I want that behavior to change, so they're ignoring some of the other some behaviors. Some of the other things. Okay. Yep. So it's, you mm -hmm. know, it's, right. take it for what it's worth. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense to the teachers when they're looking at it because then they're they're reflecting on the actual students that they're working yeah. with. Yeah, right, right. That's the. Um, so this is a breakdown. Um, I t went s students on IEPs, students without IEPs, and I just looked at um, how many had one write up, how many had 
five or more, how many had ten or more, how many had, you know, ten or more uh, with, with behavior plans. I'll let you read through it on your own. The students on IEPs are different, not more often. Right. But Which half of, you know, yeah. a significant amount of them. Right. That is their whole right. diagnosis. That's why they're, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's, that's why they're yeah. getting right. services. Right. Um, so. Yep. That's the last slide, right? Yep. Yeah. So what did you, what conclusions did you draw, Brittany, from this? Um. It's 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 complicated. I mean, really, I don't I don't like looking at the data in this way um, as an overall because you have to look at each individual student. I mean, you're not especially on the IEP side, yeah. right? I mean, overall, we, we definitely have a behavior problem <laughs> at the yeah. school that we that we need to address, and the data is really helping us do that. And if I if I could give you rundowns of individual students. And show you that data, you would see a decreasing trend in a lot of the students yeah. that we're putting interventions in place for, which That's I think great. is a positive thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, looking at the data this way, I mean, I think it's good for the teachers to have. I'll certainly share it out with them so that they are aware. It's more of an awareness kind of thing, just yeah. keeping in mind. But it also makes sense to me. Um, and it doesn't feel good to think, oh my gosh, the students on IEPs are getting written up more, they must feel horrible. But that's not what they're used for anymore. That's like an old way of thinking about how you're writing up students and you're sending this letter home to the family when they're, you know, right. and that's not happening. It's really just like academic data. You collect it all the time. Right. And you're gonna collect more data on students who have IEPs because that's the nature of an IEP. I mean, I did it, like I loads of data on students, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. um, so. It yeah. also takes a, a long time to change those behavioral yeah. patterns yes. Yes. Yeah. with kids. Yeah. And a lot of investment from uh, varying levels. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that are involved yeah. in, in that kind of support for kids. Mm -hmm. And we sit around and we brainstorm, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. what can we do? What do we have? And, and yeah. we'll be honest, we struggle. We don't, mm -hmm. I mean, the interventions sometimes that we want to provide, we, we just can't. can't. We don't have the manpower yeah. to do it. So. But I do think it is, it's it's getting better. The students yeah. who are now now that we have the consistent data and we're able to put more intervention in place and the SEIs are really they've been working very hard and, mm -hmm. and, and we have a great relationship with the SPED department um, that I think I think it's a it's a trend that's going down. I mean, you were getting students in, but but we're putting so much in at the early ages now, kindergarten this mm -hmm. past year, to help support that. So now, when they as they get older, yeah. they'll they'll need less. We'll mm -hmm. see the behaviors decreasing trend. So ideally, in five years from now, this will look different. I mean, we have to work on the other side, the regular ed students, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So. Anyway, I don't know if it was helpful or not, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's good. no, no. It's yeah, good to, that's good. It's helpful. <coughs> All right, and that concludes the report. Okay, it's good work. So, setting the next agenda. So that meeting would be September sixteenth. Yep. Would be what? September 16th. And, and we're going to do the radar list that, that night? Yeah. Okay. September 16th? September 16th. Yeah. Yeah.
Does this see her like <laughs> Windsor moved their meeting to our night? No. But that's okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll straighten them up. They'll have to move them. What? <laughs> yeah, they could go first Monday because of Labor Day. Yeah. Oh, just oh, that Monday. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we will always be the third Monday. Third Correct. Monday is our okay. day. Okay, I'm going to put this down for you. Okay, I thing. am managing to invite everybody again if you would like to be invited. Christine, you have conflict. <laughs> <laughs> on the 16th? Yeah. Yeah, because I already put it in my calendar. A school board meeting at 6 Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Brittany did, too. Mm -hmm. We're in for the year. Oh, Third good. Monday. Okay. We're here. Okay. And I'm going to also do recurring. Oh, you're on there. You're a question mark. You're tentative. David tentative. On the 3rd Monday. The 16th of September? Yeah, you have a question mark. Huh. Christine is... I'm not even okay, there. I, wow. I just sent it to everybody, so okay. have fun with that. I don't yeah, know. That's fine. It'll just appear in my calendar twice. I don't know why when I <laughs> add stuff to my calendar, it just, huh. <laughs> that's okay. It, like, pulls up an email list of everybody. Like, I start typing Heartland School Board, and it pulls up an email list of everybody. It says, hi, do you it's want to do this? It's reading your mind. <laughs> uh, yeah. You just sent it to me. I did. Or whatever. <laughs> I just sent it to everybody again. Whatever. I'll do the schedule work. Um, Okay, so we have the radar list. Um, we're going to need budget. Um, radar. Radar. Um, so you want financials? You want financials? Yes. Yeah, I guess. And again, are you going to do that with, like, using the system you had described? That <coughs> um, you'll meet with Ed, and then, or do you think he needs to do the end of the year? Uh. Just let me know. We don't have to decide tonight. Yeah, no, I, I, if you could give him a reminder to touch base with me. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't mind presenting it. I think it's, we came in okay, right? I, last know? I knew, but I haven't heard. And um, Yeah, I think, yeah, well, we had a huge, o, you know, special ed overage, which did get charged back to, okay. so I don't, think it's, as, I don't think it's as good year. as we, yeah. I don't think it's as good as we thought it was originally, but okay. I still think you're in the black. Okay. Um, I'm sure other I'll stuff will come up between then. Touch base with you. So what are the ones we've got now? We've got radar, radar, radar list, list, financials. Uh, why did I think there was one more? We should have a... We should uh, keep the portrait. SRO update. We should do a portrait. portrait. Portrait update, just like... Oh, yeah, we should, that should be standard. And the yeah. SRO update on that meeting. And the yeah, SRO the update. Mm -hmm. That's good. Those will just be standard. You might want a meal program update by then. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yes, you, could, you could do yeah, how's that. How's it going? A what? A, a meal program. A food program update. Oh, yes, okay. I definitely want that. I Matter of fact, I good. think. No, that's right. He. Has Craig. Did Craig go to our retreat? Yeah, yeah. he did. Yes. Okay, yeah. He gave me a tour of the line arrangement today. Of he what? Did. did he really? Was it amazing? Does it look good? <laughs> <laughs> There's no food. No food. It's just <laughs> <laughs> it's it's food. kind of flat. <laughs> um, I'm excited to see when the menus come. So out. he described how, how he was, was going to. <clears throat> yeah, I think he's almost got the menu done. He yeah. showed me a draft today, but. I, okay. Yeah. Great. It'll look interesting. Mm -hmm. It'll look interesting. Yeah, I think he's definitely got ideas, but you know. Execution. Looks execution's good. critical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Fingers crossed. Um, okay, so should we go to executive? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's fine. Okay, so we have an executive meeting to discuss staffing issues. And we'll go, we'll go in Christine's office. Sure. Okay. Questions. Staffing hey. questions. <laughs> I move oh. to... Oh, yeah. I call this meeting to move. closure. What do you well, mean? no, we're going to, to move into move executive, executive session. session. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So okay. moving on. I'll second it. Okay. Thanks, guys. I vote aye. Get that, Diane? Okay. <laughs> I vote aye, too.